Pleasant good morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. It is 10 minutes now past the hour of 7 o'clock. This is Mornings with Mary on WHAT. Got to get that morning frog out of the throat. We're going to be around till 10 o'clock this morning and certainly hope you'll stay with us. State Senator Shaka Patar will join us at about 8 o'clock this morning. And, of course, tomorrow morning, his opponent, Congressman Lou Blackwell, will be here. And we expect for these two days to be rather nice for us uh, to top our morning off for the senator as he makes his way here. The Philadelphia Inquirer gave their endorsement this morning to State Senator Shaka Fatah. It's a rather interesting endorsement. Uh, you, you should read it. Uh, I'm certain that many of you have your minds made up, although uh, the polls say that there is a large number of people who just simply haven't been able to come through yet. And some of you called us in the morning, last ooh, day before yesterday and yesterday, and you told us that you had not made up your mind. Although I kind of doubt it, you know, I really, I really kind of doubt that anybody in the 2nd Congressional District uh, by now don't know who they're going to vote for. But we're going to talk about that for these next two days, and we're going to try to squeeze in, if we can, whatever we can, about James Walker and the cab drivers. And, of course, uh, we are awaiting Judge Nigro's decision at 10 o'clock this morning. We'll break in on WHAT, wherever we are, when he makes the decision on the charter chain. So we'll get our telephone lines open at 581-5186, 581-5186. Now, what we'd like to kind of set up for you is so that we can get as much as possible out of our candidates and incumbent today is that, well, let's don't have a, if we can help it, let's try not to have a debate. Let's try to ask questions, particularly those of you who have not made up your minds or just feel like you're kind of on the, on the edge. Call the number 581-5186 when our candidate gets here. Uh, ask him questions. Uh, those of you who don't know anything about his record or are a little confused about it, uh, but one of the things I think we, we don't need to entertain is why are you running against uh, Mr. Blackwell? I think that uh, Shaka Fatah has, has made that clear, and it really doesn't make very much difference now. Why? Except the fact that he is running. Uh, there were those who said he'd probably pull out of the race. He did not. Uh, this race, of course, will climax on next Tuesday the 10th of May. We expect all of you to go out to vote. It is too late now to uh, make an absentee vote. Let's see. Yes, yesterday was the last day for an absentee vote. So you've got to go to the polls. That's the only way you can do it. Sometime between the hour of 7 o'clock next Tuesday and 8 o'clock Tuesday night, you've got to go to the polls. So let's get it all started right here on Mornings with Mary on WHAT. Wednesday, May 4th, 1994. Countdown to the election. Cloudy skies today with periods of rain. High temperatures in the 50s. How's that for me? Tonight we'll have some rain low in the 40s presently. We're already looking at 52 degrees. Of course there's another race in this town. There's several others. And we'll have a chance to drop those in too as we go through our morning. Twelve and a half minutes now past the hour of 7 o'clock. We'll be back. In the race for governor this year, there is only one best choice. Dwight Evans. The, the first person on happens Philadelphia to be the, pay, the first PIA of the morning. <laughs> a young lawyer who I don't think she ever had a case. If so, she must have night court. She calls me every day. Um, KT, I know. Excuse me. I am really insulted that we didn't get James Walker. You know who he is? James Walker. Walker. He is the, yeah. He is. The, I need sound bite from him. And then, and then, would you call Connie in the streets office? Tell her, Judge Nigro, I talked to him last night. He's going to make that decision at 10. And it's just going to like be made at 10, and that's it. We, we need it. It's those two things I'd like to have with Good people have had some financial problems beyond their control. Bridge for governor is on with us? been able to secure financing for a new well, my good friend Merv Carew. This University of Pennsylvania Cancer Center. At one in this campaign, there are a lot of people UPCC. who normally would have been for one candidate or the other, but 
A lot of I, I find there are a lot of private agendas in this uh, campaign. A lot of people who have um, gotten contracts. Uh, there's a great sympathy vote for the incumbent. Um, not the incumbent. Yeah, the incumbent. Because he's, um, he, he's a good person. He's been around a while. Uh, but this young boy, um, Patar, has just um, piled a lot of steam up. So I don't think anybody's willing to call this one. I really don't. When politicians said law and order, it meant brutality and injustice for African Americans. Now, when they say three strikes and out, it means jail without Do, justice for me. more black Make people. a note that Are you black black well for voted for the three for strikes you're out for the other for Congress because they want to build more schools, not more jails. That's right, Henry. I hope the voters listen. Because they need and WHAT, first call for today, Beverly from Southwest Philadelphia. Bev, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, good morning. Um, yeah, uh, I'm calling about these political endorsements mm -hmm. and these co co uh, co commercials that people, private citizens, are making to endorse certain politicians. And I'm, I'm wondering how many people really depend on these endorsements to make a decision. I know when people get certain endorsements from certain people, that makes me decide not to vote for them as opposed to voting for them. Um, for example, the minister. Who are these people? Who, how many votes do they really control? And what gives them the right to go out and make these endorsements anyhow? Because the candidate asked them. You know, I don't know of anybody who willingly stands up, makes a tape, stands at a press conference without being asked by the candidate and that is a great question for each candidate this week yeah because i mean i, I mean what do they have to pay for these endorsements because i know a lot of folks I, I can't imagine spending all this money for commercials and everything if you don't expect to get something back what are you getting back who are these family leaders too i mean i have i've heard about them ever since i've been back in philadelphia from school and I have yet to see how any of them get elected or appointed. I think they're a little club, a clique, you know, to get together and designate themselves family of leaders. But, you know, they sure do wield a lot of power. And I, w I really want to know how, you know. Um, you know, Beverly, you're, you're probably sort of like I am. Uh, there, I can't think of an endorsement from anybody who would make me vote for someone if I wasn't going to vote for them in the first place. But there are not a whole, whole lot of people out there like that. Uh, oddly enough, when you hear, I'll give you an example. Let's say a Marion Tasco, who is a council person, ward leader, uh, endorses someone. Well, there are a lot of folks in her district that really, really don't take the time to read about a candidate, to get to know about a candidate. So they'll say, well, if Miss Marion think he's good, then he's good. Uh, let's take Mary Mason. I shudder when I think that people are looking for me to get on this microphone on Monday, and I don't call them endorsements, I call them recommendations. Why? Because they don't read Beverly, they don't look at brochures, they don't go to coffee clutches, they don't do the things that you do to make up your mind, such as, as an attorney, first of all, looking back, what has this guy done? What, what kind of record does he have? If this guy was a judge on the bench, you know, you and I talked about this during the retention time. Well, you, you and I somehow have this information, or rather we go and dig it up. People don't do it. They don't do it. This morning's inquiry endorsing Shaka Fatah. Let me tell you something. This is going to get Shaka Fatah a whole lot of white votes. Because you got to read the comparison that they made between him and Bill Gray. I mean, I had to stop for just a minute and say, wait a minute, hold it. Is this the Bill Gray I knew? Is this the Shaka Fatah I know? Well, you know, and that's one of the questions I want to ask him, because people seem to forget that when you run for Congress, it's a national office that deals with international issues. And I really want to know what his position is on Palestine. I mean, they, they just signed a peace accord today that gives the Palestinian people control over 1% of Palestine. Yes. What to do? And I want to know what he's going to do as a congressman to make sure that the 50% of the land that's still in the hands of, of Zionist settlers over there in Gaza gets back into the hands of the indigenous people, the Palestinians. See, I think he sold himself out to the Jews, you know, and he ain't going to come on there and do nothing that's going to offend the Jews. Well, well, first of all, you know, that's what you think. So uh, I'm sure he can defend that if he chooses to, but, you know, you're probably one of the few people who are going to want to know that because the people are going to want to know, forget about Palestine. They want to, what about North Philly? 
What about West Philly? I mean, what are you going to do to bring decent housing? Uh, Shaka is supposed to be very high on housing and education. What are you going to do to see to it that my daughter, when she finishes high school next year, gets some college money? People aren't going to be concerned about Palestine. See, my point is, if you're not going to help the people in Palestine, you're not going to help the people in North Philly. Well, also, there's something else you probably uh, are not thinking about. Who was, who among us was bigger and higher on helping the Jewish people and pleasing the Jewish people than Bill Gray? Right. And he got elected every time without any problem. That's why I'm talking about you got to watch where people's support come from because you don't fight the hand that feeds you. You know, if the Jews, if the Jews are back in Chaka Fatah, and the Jews have business interests right here in Philadelphia, there was a big article about Sam Rappaport in Sunday's Inquirer. They're big-time real estate developers all over the black community, and they control businesses all throughout the black community. What makes you think he's going to do anything to offend them here? Are you in the second congressional district? I wish I was. See, now they're going. First of all, they're going to tell you they don't care what you think. Well, you can, you can forget it. You're just a mouth offer. You're not even in the district. You can't vote for either one. They're going to say you ought to focus your attention on the governor's race, some, something that can affect you. Well, I vote, you know, I'm, I'm real going to vote for Dwight Evans, you know. And Why? I'm surprised. Well, you know, I mean, I, I think he's a good guy, actually. And I, I really wish he had a, a couple of other things going for him that could make him possibly win. But i got to deal with the reality of Pennsylvania, but I'm going to give him my vote. Okay. I mean? Thanks for calling us this morning. I appreciate it. You probably still know him best as City Councilman Lou Blackwell. And you remember him stopping PGW's rate increase for the first time in the city's history. Passing the set-aside bill to increase contracts for minorities and women to over $600 million. Pushing through approvals for the convention center in Liberty Place 1 and 2, creating thousands of jobs. Well, these days, Blackwell is spending a lot of time in Washington, and they call him congressman. But he's still fighting for our interest. As the only African-American on the budget committee, Blackwell personally led the effort that brought $46 million in housing funds to the city. He pushed to restore over $700 million in low-income energy assistance funds and prevented cuts of $200 million in rapid transit funding that could have forced our transportation rates even higher. And he supported a $3.6 billion increase in funding for education. On May 10th, pull me for 18 for Congressman Blackwell. Aren't you glad real commitments never change? It's 24 minutes now past the hour of 7 o'clock in Philadelphia, 52 degrees on WHAT. Good morning, Anthony. Good morning, Mary. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. It's going to be busy. I know, 422. I already called the GB. I know that it's a big block up up there, so you, they better go another route, right? Not trying to get them around that. Eh? We'll Can you? Yeah. Okay. All right. This traffic report is a service of Bradley's. The big problem, though, is, Mary, it's really westbound 422, yeah, which should help the GB. In fact, uh, it's it's not good on eastbound 422. Right, it's a little bit slow at 10th Street. And then into yeah. New Jersey, normal jams on 42 and 55. Four and no or. major problems up across the Walt Whitman Bridge. Awesome. And the Ben Franklin really Bridge, is. Bridge is only a little bit slow on the Philly really side. Of the I mean, because even the one can do with so much. Jazz along with something right. gold. Now Bradley's take 70% off all 14 karat gold and gemstone jewelry just in time for Mother's Day. That's Metro Traffic. Did, would, repeat that. Would, did you say patio furniture? Yeah, that's what I. Shoot all over the highway. Yeah. I'll be back. <laughs> do you know? Do you know I've been shopping for patio furniture? I mean, that's a nice. Might be a little damaged. So what? <laughs> Thanks, Anthony. <laughs> Good morning, you're on W H A T. This is mornings with Mary. Five eight one five one eight six. I know you late birds out there want to wait a while, but if you'd like to get your comments in. Our lines are open at WHAT. West Philadelphia. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Mary. How are you? Fine, sir. Good. I was just listening to uh, all the talk about endorsements, and it's, it's interesting um, how some people connect endorsements with certain uh, influence groups. And as I understand the process, candidates go before the editorial boards, answer questions, and then they decide on who they're going to endorse. That's in terms of newspapers, yes. And then, well, when the mayor very early uh, who happens to be Jewish, uh, and John Street came out and endorsed the incumbents, all of them, nobody had any criticism about those endorsements. So mm -hmm. I I'm just trying to understand what people's motives are. Well, I I'm going to do something that I don't normally do on this program. I don't let uh, people address a previous caller, but the caller from Southwest Philadelphia has an itch, okay. an itch that she can't scratch. And, and I hope that one day through our program, we can help her uh, eliminate that. 
Uh, I take great issue with her saying Jews have bought off Shaka Fatah. I take great issue with that. I would take even the same type of issue with it if she had said it about Mr. Blackwell. Uh, I don't know what it is, and, and, and this is a caller that if she has an itch against you, she has an extremely sophisticated way of getting it across the airways. I, in my effort to be fair and to allow people to get whatever comments on in re within reason that they want to get on, I accepted that. But I, I needed to back that up to say, I'm not involved in Mr. Fatah's campaign. Uh, I am not involved in Mr. Blackwell's campaign any more than anybody else is. I like both of these men and can live with either one of them being in Congress. But I do take great issue uh, with her saying that he's bought off by the Jews. I mean, to me, that's an absolute insult, and it's, 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 it's just wrong to say. First of all, she hasn't looked at his financial statement to see who made contributions. I doubt if she's had a conversation with him. And to allude to that uh, by saying it is exactly goes, goes back to what you just said. What did she say when Rendell stood up and endorsed Blackwell? Right. I mean, you know, I, I think, as you do, that voters are to take more time, read these people's records. Yes. An intelligent choice, because it's important. You know, I think that who we choose this time will greatly affect our future. We ought to just make an intelligent choice. I just encourage everyone to read both of these guys' records and look at who can help us in the future and make a, a sound decision. Let me tell you something. Philadelphia 2nd Congressional District is not going to go down the drain no matter who is elected. Naturally, we all have our choices, and we are going to work hard for our choices, and that's the way it ought to be. I just want this campaign to stay on the high road. I don't want this campaign to dip down into the ditches over the last few days. Thank you for your call. We appreciate it. It's 7.30 in Philadelphia. This is Mornings with Mary. You know, the very next time you have an emergency plumbing, heating, and drain cleaning problem, I hope you'll remember to call Sears. You see, Sears has been around now for, oh my, over 100 years. Plumbing, heating, repairing of all types, leaks, repair of curb traps, increase your water pressure, correct city violations, dig up and install new water lines. You name it, unstop your drains. All work is sold, furnished, and installed by Sears authorized contractors. You certainly know you can trust Sears, so why take a chance with some handyman or someone just coming by? Take a look in the Donnelly yellow pages or the white pages, and you'll find us listed prominently. All major credit cards and personal checks are accepted. If you're a little bit behind and you just haven't thought about doing it, now is the time to get it done before the hot summer months come. So that's tonight at 7.30 on Channel 10. Tonight on the Channel 10 News at 11, a medical report on electroshock therapy. The futility and the despair of depression, it's unspeakable. With Mary on WHAT Philadelphia. Have you heard the latest news in the Republican governor's race? Last Sunday, newspapers revealed that Attorney General Ernie Preet's legal problems are so bad that he's hired a criminal defense lawyer, and we're expected to pay for it. Ernie Preet wants taxpayers to pay hundreds of dollars an hour so that Preet can try to dig himself out of the scandals that have disgraced his office. The state police commissioner exposed that Ernie Preet, quote, sought and accepted the financial backing of known illegal video poker operators to further his political ambition. And the FBI and federal grand juries are investigating Ernie Preate's office for other possible illegal activity. And now Ernie Preate wants the taxpayers to pay for his criminal defense lawyer. That's outrageous. There's a better choice. Tom Ridge. He's the only Republican who can win. He fought the Clinton tax plan and earned the taxpayers' hero award. He'll cut taxes and wasteful spending $2 billion. Tom Ridge, he can change Pennsylvania. Honestly. Paid for by the Tom Ridge for Governor Committee. It's 26 minutes now before 8 o'clock in Philadelphia. Uh, State Senator Shaka Fatah will join us live in our studios at 8 o'clock this morning. He'll be here for about an hour with us. And we'll have an opportunity to ask him those so-called last-minute questions for the election. We certainly want to urge all of you to go out and vote. Uh, I was told by some of the folks who watch these elections that today at 10 o'clock, Judge uh, Russell Nigro is going to make the decision as to whether or not the charter change revision uh, buttons or levers are locked or whether they're left unlocked or whether there is, in fact, a charter change commission. Depending on that decision and if, in fact, uh, they are locked, I was told by some one of those 
election watchers that there will be a low turnout. Well, I hope that doesn't happen. I realize that the charter change stirred up a real pot of peas out there, but it is the race that is probably more key than any other race in some respect, including the uh, Republican race. And let me tell you why. The second congressional district certainly has now, and for a while, unless something changes, will have an African American uh, in the leadership position. And right now, if you live in the state of Pennsylvania, you and I know that this is the highest office that an African American is going to hold in the state of Pennsylvania, certainly in my lifetime. I don't believe, and although I want to see it happen, we're going to be able to get a United States Senator, which would come next after the United States Representative, as an African American in the next few years. Uh, not, not, to, not to think about the ones that are in there doing such a great job, because they're just probably doing what they can do. But the congressional seat is very key, and it's very important that you keep in mind, if you stay home on Tuesday thinking that, well, it's not a lot of excitement. I love it when you say there's not a lot of excitement. Look, sex is exciting. You get excited over sex. You're not supposed to get excited over an election. You get involved in an election. And I'm going to be sitting here pounding away at you to make sure that whether that charter change question is on the ballot or not, that you go out and vote. And particularly if you live in the second congressional district where I live, because the choice is ours to make, and it's to make on May the 10th. Now, in the first congressional district, there's no doubt about it, there's a very key race there. But I think we all know that that race has almost been decided. But you shouldn't let that happen in two years. But if we're around in two more years, we'll get to that one for you, too. Germantown, you want to talk about that race, don't you? Yes. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, LB. How are you? Okay. Listen, uh, if I'm not mistaken, last time you had Shaka on, he talked about how much money he raised uh, um, through his campaign. And I don't remember, <laughs> LB. Well, I, well, well, okay. Well, I was just curious because I know I, I read in the paper where he quoted where Lucian Blackwell was outraised him. He said, well, this is not an auction. Uh, but in the beginning, he was talking about how much money he raised, and he was, you know, and, and he was just projecting himself as being um, a better fundraiser than the, the encumbrance. And I'm, I'm, I was just wondering about that now as, 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 as that he's been out. Well, you're just wondering, but you're wondering to the wrong person. Well, I thought maybe you might have that on your scorecard, you know what I mean? Well, uh... I don't really remember know how much either one of them have raised, and I tell you why. I don't get I don't get their financial records during the race. I, I don't think it's necessary. I do get it after the race is over, and and the reason being is I need to know so that I can tell you all who contributed to whose campaign, and to start doing that during the campaign I think is unfair to both of the candidates. You got to remember. Uh, LB, there are a lot of people, and I talked to a number of them over this weekend attending the various fundraisers, who contributed to both. I mean, good business people have given to Blackwell and Fatal. Very close friend of mine, one of the advertisers on this station, called me at home last night. And I ran it past him, you know, well, how do you feel? He said, look, I gave them both a check. And this is what good business people do. The other question, Mary, you had, talk, you had talked about, I think, earlier this week or last week about uh, somebody having a contract with one of the candidates they ask if they so happen to win. I was wondering, would that be Charlie Bowser and, and um, uh, Nicholas? Now, LB, you, 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 you've you been listening to me for a lot of years, don't you? And you ought to know that if I had any particular person's name in mind that I was going to mention, I would have mentioned it. Okay. First of all, the person that I, the persons that I refer to is absolutely not Charlie Bowser. Uh, let me just for the listeners who didn't hear it because you've twisted my words all around. I said that there were people in this city who were supporting candidates for a different reason than what they were saying they were uh, supporting them for. And I think that these people not necessarily need to be exposed, but I think they need to be known about. I think that you have a right to know if Mary Mason gets a $250,000 contract from Congressman Blackwell for some services that he can get for me uh, a contract out of Washington, I think you have a right to know that I have a $250,000 contract if I'm endorsing him. Don't you? Yes. Because I think what I am doing, I am maybe endorsing Congressman Blackwell because I think he's the best person for the job, but the pie has been sweetened with that contract. 
Okay. So you're just going to have to wait because, you know, because of legal reasons, I've got to wait until I see. I've, I've got all the rumors. I've got all the innuendos. I've got all the yes, I believe that happened, but I've got to see the pie. You know that. Okay. Trying to steal something through this show this morning, ain't you, kid? Uh, no this is Mornings with Mary. 581-5186. We've got 20 minutes now before the senator will be joining us tomorrow morning in our studios. And what time is Mr. Blackwell tomorrow? Seven. Seven who? Seven? Seven? Or seven? Seven. Seven o'clock. Well, he's going to be here before me tomorrow morning. <laughs> Mr. Blackwell is going to join us in our first hour. So a few minutes after the hour of seven o'clock tomorrow morning, Congressman Lou Blackwell will be here, and it'll be a pleasure to have him in our studios. We'll be right back. I did that, didn't I? Yes. Well, let me ask you something. Even if I did it, shouldn't you have cut me off from doing it? Because you know we can't. I didn't know you did it until I told him after. I didn't. No, hold it. I didn't tell him. I don't book people. I don't book people. No, no, no. You know, now you know I don't do that. Do what, hon? But you could have said, well, we can't get started until at least 7.15 or 7.30. Yeah, I agree, but... Well, then you're the boss. You're the producer, not me. I can't overrule you. See, because we got to give him equal time. It'll be an hour. He can't get on at 7. He can't get on till 7.15. He has to get a what, 8 o'clock train? Oh, if he cuts himself, okay. If he cuts himself short, then we, then we don't have no problem with it. So what we're going to do, select the short record and just get right in there as fast as you can? Good morning. It is 16 minutes now before 8 o'clock in Philadelphia. You are listening to Mornings with Mary. There is a possibility that you might like to bank your call in to State Senator Shaka Fatah. I have no doubt that the lines are going to be quite busy when he arrives in about 16 minutes from now. And we'll have an opportunity to talk with him and ask him your question and our questions and just kind of see where he stands at this, at this juncture in the uh, election. On Tuesday, May 10th, it's the election here in Philadelphia, and I guess I might say that from what we've heard on these um, airwaves over the last few months, the second congressional district is probably getting the most attention. You have two persons running in that race that we know of. Now, somebody told me the other day there was somebody else running. Well, I got to tell you something, sir or madam, if you haven't made yourself known, we can't go digging you up. You have, of course, the incumbent, Congressman Lou Blackwell, who has a long and illustrious career as a legislator, as a labor leader, as a council person. There are a lot of achievements and things that you're going to want to know about and hear about tomorrow when the congressman arrived. You have State Senator Shaka Fatah, who without a doubt started when he was a very young boy moving into an elected seat, probably the youngest in the state, and his career has not been a secret. He has been very heavy on housing and education, and he'll be here at 8 o'clock this morning to tell you all about it. Now, let me tell you something. If you've been involved in an automobile accident, and I certainly have been very lucky, but I've had somebody hit me while I wasn't looking, here's a message for you from my good friend Joe Stafford. Joe Stafford at Haynes and Lime Kim Pike is Haynes Street Colex. That's at 2038 East Haynes Street. You know, Joe's been around in that business for 33 years. And I can tell you for most of those years, we've had the opportunity to talk to you about him right here on this station, all about them on the Mornings with Mary program. So stop up at Haynes Street and tell Joe Stafford, Mary Mason told you to come. In the race for governor, Honey Drug Emporium, there is please. only one best choice. Dwight Evans. The Philadelphia Inquirer, the Philadelphia Daily News, and the Pittsburgh Sammy. Post Gazette, they all have endorsed Dwight Evans as the best choice for our next governor. Let's hear what all prone defensive you, end Reggie White has to say. So, you know that I care about Philadelphia and all of Pennsylvania. It's because I care about Pennsylvania that I'm urging all of my friends to vote for Dwight Evans. As governor, he'd be an all pro. The white will work hard to make the streets safe, the schools better, and get this state moving again. So I'm asking you to join here Monday. me, Reggie yeah. White, yeah, Reggie. Ray Ellis, in here Monday Will Blunt, Fred Barnett, and many it. others who are working hard. Good, good. In fact, he called me last night from Maryville, Tennessee. I said, where are you? He said, that's where I live. Really? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Mornings with Mary. Philadelphia. 13 minutes now before it's going to be 8 o'clock in Philadelphia. And you know something? We haven't been too busy on the phones this morning. I know you're all waiting for the senator to get here, but you'd be wise if you called your question in now. 
581-5186. And of course, we're in open forum, by the way. If you think we're locked into politics, we're not. We are pretty much in open forum if you'd like to do that for the next 13 minutes because at 8 o'clock this morning, State Senator Shaka Fatah. Um, at 10 o'clock this morning, thereabouts, maybe a little before, a little after, how do you know it's there? So, however you vote, whatever you do, at least get the Philadelphia Tribune and read Vincent Thompson's column about the 62 changes. Now, why shop at so-called sale prices when you can save every day at Drug Emporium? Drug Emporium offers a huge variety of great prices every single day. Country, which is not necessary. They don't want this, this uh, Aristide, whatever his, his name is, uh, this moron. Today, and find out which clean bill program is best suited for you. Remember, we're here to help you. Philadelphia Gas works for you. Nutritional store, and they have a great product called Royal Royal High Heirloom. It's an internal nutrient with strong, vibrant hair, for skin, and nails. Nutrition is vital to the strength, the vibrance, and beauty of your hair. And Royal Heirloom have all of these things precisely blended, herb-rich and specific. W oh, I know you happy this morning. You got to inquire. Good morning. Senator is here. Good morning, Senator. Good morning, Mary. How are you? Good morning to your listeners. You would have a bigger smile. <clears throat> you, you, you look like you're broken down. I'd have a little smile on my face. Well, it's more than a notion running for United States Congress, <laughs> uh, so it takes, uh, uh, takes a lot of hours. Uh, but I do want to uh, say that we are indeed uh, pleased with the status of our campaign at this point. Uh, with just a few days now left, uh, we feel confident that uh, we've put forth the best effort uh, that we can to win this seat. Uh, we're looking forward to the judgment of the voters on Election Day. Shaka, you, um, when you first came here to announce your candidacy on our program, you got a lot of flack. You got a lot of flack from people, almost resentment. Why are you doing this? Why are you running against this man? Why don't you stay in the Senate? Has that died down, or are you still hearing that kind of talk? Uh, I'm not hearing it. Uh, we're out campaigning every day. I've knocked on uh, literally thousands and thousands of doors uh, throughout this district uh, in the Mount Airy, Germantown uh, uh, community, and West Philadelphia, both on the north side of Market and west side knocked on doors in North Philadelphia and South Philadelphia. Uh, that issue has not been raised with me as a candidate uh, out interacting with the voters. This morning you got the endorsement of the Philadelphia um, Inquirer. Heretofore, I've heard politicians make light of that, particularly uh, black politicians who said, well, they weren't going to endorse me anyway. How do you feel about their endorsement? Well, I remember in 1992 when they endorsed uh, the uh, gentleman I'm running against in this race, uh, when he was um, going against Dolores Tucker, he was very pleased. I remember him here right on your show uh, that he had received uh, those uh, endorsements. Uh, somehow, when I get this endorsements uh, from whether it's a ward leader uh, or a newspaper or a, a group of clergy, um, that it's somehow less important. Uh, but the most important endorsement is on Election Day. Uh, we are very pleased that the Inquirer uh, and said that they think that I'll be an outstanding congressman, that the Daily News says that uh, I'm an agenda setter and someone who doesn't follow but is prepared to lead. Very happy that the Philadelphia Sun, even in endorsing my opponent, said I had a very impressive record uh, in Harrisburg, in their editorial. And then the uh, Tribune yesterday uh, talked about uh, the extraordinary efforts that my office has been successful in and that you and your listeners are aware of in terms of promoting African-American students to go into graduate school. Uh, and talked about the fact that I had a number of very important reasons uh, and issues that I wanted to raise in the Congress. Uh, however, they felt um, in the final analysis that uh, the incumbent uh, deserved, uh, uh, deserved uh, more time in Congress. So, I mean, all four newspapers, and if you want to put it in perspective, the two major dailies have supported me, um, and others have had nothing bad to say about me. And I think that in any time that you've been in public life, for as long as I've been in public life, uh, for more than a decade now, uh, and that uh, our, the poll numbers indicate that uh, not, not more than 10 percent of the people think about me in an unfavorable way, uh, and that in a city of such uh, diverse opinion, uh, that four very different types of newspapers with very different types of editorial boards uh, would make such comments, uh, I'm very pleased. Let's go back a little bit to endorsements. You, you said that uh, the real endorsement will be Election Day. But there's no doubt about it. You and any other candidate for an office seek the endorsement of various 
people and groups of people. How important are those endorsements? Well, I think that uh, especially when you're running for a position that you've never held before, uh, that it's almost like applying for a new job. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not abnormal that uh, people would like to see the recommendations of others uh, when, because they don't have personal knowledge of you in that particular position. That, and I've, as a candidate for office, running for re-election for the state house, uh, where I ran for re-election and was re-elected twice, and running for re-election for the Senate, did not seek nor uh, did uh, we showcase endorsements when I was running for re-election. Once you have a job and you've held it for two or three years or four years, um, like the incumbent in this race, it's not so much what other people think about how well he's done this job. It's up to the people that he works for to make a judgment because they've had knowledge of uh, his work over these years. Uh, so I think that you know it is different when you are seeking a position that you never held um, and when you have already had that position, uh, the judgment is really based on the work that you've done. Um, how do you answer people who say, Shaka Fatah looks congressional? This morning's inquiry is comparing you with Bill Gray. That lends to that uh, phrase we've heard over and over again. He looks congressional. Um, of course, looks has, you have to look, do more than look congressional. But in the first full paragraph of this endorsement, um, the inquiry talks about Bill Gray. So they're really comparing you with him. How does that set with you? Well, in many ways, I guess it's very favorable. That is to say that Bill Gray, uh, notwithstanding whatever his critics may say, and I've been a critic of his at times, um, rose higher in the United States Congress than any other African American ever elected. And that he did that not on the basis of seniority, uh, but on the basis of ability. Uh, that is to say that he, there were plenty of Congress people who had been there longer than Bill Gray had been alive. That is, just, you know, and, uh, you know, and he moved up uh, into uh, the chairmanship of the budget committee and on to, uh, on up the ladder. Uh, that is not my interest. And as you have watched, uh, and your listeners perhaps may have watched my career, in the state house, uh, I did not run for leadership positions. Um, and I, in the Senate, I'm not Could run you for have? Lead Oh, absolutely. But I did not. What I've spent my time on and have been very effective at it, uh, the Daily News said that I was one of the most effective legislators that the city's ever sent to Harrisburg, is in the nuts and bolts of the legislative process, in the substance of what gets done. I was the prime sponsor of the Employment Opportunities Act in 1987. After a four-year fight to get that bill passed, which was to create job training programs for people on welfare, and we introduced the bill, it passed through the House, it sat in the Senate for two years and died on the last day of the session in the Senate. I, we got reelected to the House, I introduced it again, and two years later, on the last day of the session, we finally got the bill sent back over from the Senate, and the governor signed it in 1987. In fact, a couple of uh, old line, and I don't mean old in age, but award leaders on the program, because we want to go down to the roots of politics and how it starts. and and whether the ward leaders and the committee people, uh, their importance uh, is as it was many years ago. There's a rumor going around town that Chaka Fatah has more than a dozen, uh, nearly two dozen, uh, ward leaders supporting him, but we haven't seen anything of it. Do you have ward leader support? Uh, we have the support of a number of ward leaders, and, um, and we're very pleased with that. Um, the Democratic Party is having a primary election. That is an election in which the only reason we're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to bring our voting machines into the community is for Democrats to determine who they want their candidate to be in the general election. Uh, and so in this process, uh, it is an opportunity for every Democrat, ward leader, committee person, and, and average voter to make a decision between myself and the incumbent. Uh, some people are uncomfortable with the fact that there's a, this, a choice to be made but this is a district which is majority African-American, majority Democrat, uh, and only one or two things can happen on any election day. That is, is that whoever's in is going to stay in, or there's going to be a race uh, between one or more candidates. But do you have one leader support? Yes, I do. Are you able to tell us about how many or just a ballpark? We believe, based on everything that's been said and, and awards that I've been invited to to speak in, uh, that at, at, at minimum half of. Uh, the Democratic ward organizations in this district will be supporting me. Now, th that's, that's unusual because um, uh, you are not the incumbent. You are already seated in a Democratic seat. 
which a lot of folks would like to see you stay there, but you have the right to do what you want to do. Um, what does it take to get people to turn around like that? Does it take what you're doing now, them knowing your record, or do you have to go beyond that? Well, I think that, first of all, it takes um, some inattention by the incumbent. That, that's first of all. I mean, I think that it, to the degree that those relationships were solid, there would be no opportunity for me to win support among uh, Democratic uh, 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 um, uh, officials here in Philadelphia. But as you know, when you look through this district, it's hard to find anyone in elected office who wasn't, did not get elected by uh, going against the party endorsed candidate. Now, that's now whether you start with Marin Tasco, who wasn't the endorsed candidate um, uh, for city commissioner or for city council, which he now sits in Mount Airy, East Mount Airy, to Dave Richardson, who ran against the party organization to get elected, uh, or Allison Swartz, uh, when the party endorsed Bob Blasey up there in the, the, uh, the, the, in the northwest, the Chestnut Hill area. Yeah. Um, that when you walk through uh, Mike Nutter, who defeated an incumbent endorsed candidate uh, for council here in West Philadelphia, um, uh, Vincent Hughes, who defeated an 18 year There's incumbent. There's a lot of that going on. Yeah, that, that, that the reality is that it's hard to find in this district. A uh, sense that you don't have voters, and obviously, therefore, some committee people and ward leaders who will, at times, support an independent, uh, what we call an independent candidate, even though you're really inside the party, but you're you're running against the the leadership of the party's wishes. Uh, Shaka, uh, our guest, by the way, is State Senator Shaka Fatah. He is running for the second congressional seat, and the election, as you know, is Tuesday, May 10th. Shaka, let's talk money. Lately, there's been a lot of conversation about your inability to raise and to have uh, the proper money. How do you feel in terms of your money right now? Are you comfortable? Oh, I guess y'all will never have enough. You always want some more. But there's been talk that you don't have the money to take your, yourself through Tuesday. And of course, not being the endorsed candidate, you can't expect money from the party, whereby your opponent certainly can do that. What's the deal on the money? Well, th this is where we kind of came in at on this race. Yes, it uh, is. is. That is that the, there was a considerable and concerted effort to suggest to people that I would not have the financial re resources uh, to run a good race. Not only have we moved from behind uh, to the lead, uh, inched into the lead, it's not a significant lead, but it's a small lead uh, in this race, uh, we have raised uh, at, at minimum uh, two to one over the incumbent. Uh, since January 1, uh, we've outpaced them considerably. Now, what is being discussed is that with the, 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 the small seed of truth in the discussion about finances in this campaign is my opponent has uh, basically held on to a lot of his money waiting for Election Day. And we've spent a lot of our money. Uh, we are advertising on a whole range of stations, uh, uh, this one and uh, nine or ten others. We have seven, I think, offices throughout this district. We have an office in North Philadelphia. Is in this South a, Philadelphia. Oh, excuse me. Is this a uh, campaign office? Campaign office. You have seven campaign right, Well, let me no. count them. I'm not sure. But we have one in North Philadelphia. We have one in South Philadelphia on Point Breeze. We have one in Center City. We have one in Delaware County. We have three here in West Philadelphia. We have an office in uh, on Germantown Avenue uh, in the Northwest. So that we can operate, and, and when I say operate, communicate and, and with the voters of this district. Uh, we have done a considerable amount of uh, a postering, even though they seem to, some of our posters seem to be taking flight um, in, in, in literature about what my record has been in the Senate, um, because we view this as an election, not a, a, a auction where you save up your money and you come and purchase it on election day. What do you mean by uh, that? What do you mean well, by that? Well, that is to say that if you look at the two strategies that are put here, the, the incumbent has spent a, just a small amount of money waiting for election day, and he's going to do what he normally does, and that is his put out a significant street army on election day um, to carry him to victory. Our strategy is a little bit different, which is to try to give as much information to voters, making an assumption that most voters are going to make up their minds well before they walk out of their door, walking down to the polling place. Will, uh, you, will you have sh what they call street money distributed? Um, oh, absolutely. We are raising um, and have raised a, a considerable sum. Uh, to uh, deal with uh, our responsibilities on election day, uh, but I, but I think that the again that the small issue of truth was that there was a a report our 20 day report in this campaign where it showed that we had spent a lot of money uh, and we had a very little at that point uh, in cash. But since that point, we've raised tens of thousands of dollars 
uh, in that um, not only will we have our resources necessary for Election Day, um, we're going to be a very significant organization on Election Day. And I think if people think about the last 10 years, any Election Day, that the Fatah campaign organization has been a very, very significant force and presence in the community on Election Day. And I don't think that there's many people who uh, are going to lay awake at night worrying about whether or not I'm going to show up on Election Day. Senator, you mentioned Congress, you mentioned campaign offices, um, and I intend to ask the incumbent this tomorrow morning. Uh, right now, there's one congressional office in Philadelphia that I know of, and when Bill Gray, since you've been compared to him, was in, he had several. If you're elected, do you intend to have offices around the city, or yes, is it a, suitable uh, to have yeah. just one office? No, I made a pledge uh, very early in this campaign, the first week of my campaign, uh, to the part uh, to the citizens of the district who live in the Northwest, uh, that is in the Mount Airy, East Mount Airy, Germantown area, uh, that uh, I would return to the Northwest a constituent service office. And that is to say that there were three, the, s the budget exists, and I'm going to have at minimum three offices um, so that con people who have problems, many of the people come to a c congressman's office for services, uh, a senior citizens that are concerned about Social Security checks or other types of documents. Uh, um, and, you, and notwithstanding whether you're young or old, an office that should be made convenient to the degree possible um, to the constituents in the district. What about these polls? You, you called our show yesterday and we had uh, the campaign manager on for your opponent. Uh, the polls, uh, that this poly, pollster that, uh, did you hire this person? Absolutely not. Um, this is a poll that was done by the Pennsylvania's for Effective Government. They do polls in every single campaign that takes place. They are a, a business-led group that I assume for purposes of their membership, uh, they want their members, the, the various uh, corporate leaders in the state, to have some idea about what's going on. They've done polls in a whole bunch of races uh, for this election, in the governor's race and so on, and that the poll actually was a poll in which they talked about the governor's race. So they talked. This is just one part of the poll, as I understand that they did. I received a call from the campaign manager of your opponent after I got off the air yesterday, and he was quite adamant about the fact that somebody paid, didn't say you, somebody paid, and they were unable to get the results, the breakdown of the poll. Did you get a breakdown of the poll? No, we didn't get a breakdown of the poll. Uh, what, they, what they're really talking about is the internals. That is to say that there are yes. details in the poll about, you know, um, uh, that give you more understanding about who was polled who was and so polled, on. exactly. We, this poll, uh, what we've seen of it, is what has been in the paper and what's been on TV. And it says that we have instant to the lead uh, in this contest, that there's still a small number of voters who are undecided. Um, it is very, very consistent with the first poll that was done in this race, which is the poll that my campaign paid for, uh, more than $10,000 for. And I think that the incumbent's campaign, which has spent a lot of time crying about a lot of things, uh, would probably be better suited conducting a poll, spend a few thousand dollars so that they can find out what's going on uh, in this district rather than crying about the fact that uh, either my campaign or other people, and I'm sure, in fact, I know that this is not the only group of, of people uh, who have done polls in this race. Let's look at this poll a little bit. Uh, in yesterday's Philadelphia uh, Daily News, the poll indicated that you were, what was the percentage breakdown? Forty percent of the vote. And, and your income, your opponent is 38. Yes, and 19 percent undecided. Undecided. It also indicated that the same uh, pollster did a poll back in the previous race that you ran, yeah. and your incumbent, the incumbent, was ahead of you. Um, I believe who was second? They did. A, they, did John, uh, they did a poll in the Blackwell John White for Todd race in '91, and their results at that point mirrored the actual results of the election. Uh, so uh, they they called it right in '91, and I, I know for uh, my supporters that we're hopeful that they called it right this time. But I would say that any two percent lead in a election contest with 19 percent undecided is not something that you sleep on. Um, you have to keep working, uh, and we plan to keep working. Uh, and, and I think it should encourage both the supporters of the incumbent and my supporters to work as hard as possible because it's a close contest, and we should therefore have a good turnout and a good a vote. Uh, in a decision that we can all respect at the conclusion of this election. Uh, let me just read. 91 race showed Blackwell winning, Fatah in second place, John White in third, which mirrored the actual election results. That's the last, that's, that's it. Are you comfortable there, Brother? 
Oh, absolutely. And I think that if you if you go back to 91, it was the Black Wall campaign who was saying that this group had this poll and they were going to win and, and using it uh, in their campaign. Isn't, I that think just, that, isn't that just politics? Well, yeah. And, and, and I said, I, I think that the fact that they would spend any time crying about a poll that shows me two points up rather than trying to figure out how to win okay. this election. We don't, we don't want to talk a lot about an, in, an incumbent. We want them to, we want to talk about issues. Uh, close contest. You said something a few minutes ago about you think this, uh, could you or do you predict yourself winning? I am very confident uh, that we have uh, not only put forth the best effort that we can put forth to win this election, but that the voters of this district uh, are going to give me an opportunity to go to Congress. They've given one to the incumbent, and they have looked at his work over the last three years. And I think that I'm going to have an opportunity to go to Washington and to see what I can do. And I think that, that they will hold me uh, accountable for uh, the, the commitments that I've made. Uh, but yes, I do think that whatever the final number, uh, that it um, and everything that we've seen, all of the work that we've done, it appears that I'm going to get an opportunity uh, to go to Washington, D.C., uh, to go to uh, the Congress and to uh, really wage the fight that I want to wage. That is, on behalf of urban cities like Philadelphia in this country, I think we're getting the short end of the deal, um, that um, the federal government has cut aid to cities from $41 billion to $22 billion. Let me ask you a question on it. If you were in Congress today, how would you vote on that three strikes and out bill? I would oppose it. And, um, and it has already passed in the Congress, and the incumbent... Uh, I, I don't want you talking okay. about the incumbent. I'm going to bring uh, those questions up well, let, me, let me answer it more, more fully. Let me, let me just say this to you, Mary. This issue of crime in the country, because this whole thing, this death penalty, the crime bill, $13 billion for new prisons is being driven by this issue of crime. Um, these are some statistics that we got from the National Rainbow Coalition yesterday. Uh, and I'm just going to take one minute, because I think it's important for you listeners to know that non-blacks, that is white Americans comprise 69% of all arrests in 1991. 69%? 69%. Well, I mean, when you well, call black voters and white voters, it's you know a smaller what? percentage. But you know what? No, the, the, no that's, this is a little private joke. Don't get caught um, short. The thing that you have going for you is that um, you're right. In all the endorsements that I read about you, you know, generally they tell you how bad the opponent is. It's, it's, it's like uh, even if they endorsed uh, Blackwell, which I don't know any he got, which was it? Got Sun. The truth. Got the Tribune, but if you read it, it's 90% for me. He did get the Tribune? Yeah, but they, I mean, they really, vocal. one part of the endorsement says, when you ask for Ty White wants to go to Congress, he can rattle, rattle off a whole list of things. When you ask the incumbent, when you ask Blackwell, he says because he, he's the incumbent. And they said that that answer is troubling, but we don't know if it's a fatal flaw. Yeah, uh, uh, Lou's gonna have a problem with that uh, three strikes and out, and with some of the things that uh, Donald Trump told me. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really. Does the sale ends up? You see, I have that that figure. Uh, oh, May 14th. You better hurry to good year. I'd leave now. Boy, are you in luck. The perfect Mother's Day gift is on sale right now at Sears Grand Central. Trust me, she'll love it. It's the 18th of the telephone 4335. The 10 channel cordless with clarity and style that's clearly ATT. And now the price is clearly Sears. Just $79.99. Save 10 bucks till May 7th. Looks as good as it sounds. Or does it sound as good as it looks? We'll be back with the correct answer after this. Anyway, folks, you gotta get one of these at Sears. Hey, if you give one to mom, she'll think she raised a pretty smart kid. Yeah, right. You know, health care seems to be on everyone's mind today, from the folks here in the neighborhood. A.T. Philadelphia. We're up to 29 minutes now past the hour of 8 o'clock, and of course you're on the line waiting to talk to State Senator Shaka Patar. 581-5186. We'll be right back. As a child, his parents told okay, him, if you I, work um, hard and play by the rules, you'll succeed in life. Do you know what these... Three, Dwight Evans listened you know to his parents, they, and they, they want to ask the question, make a statement. Founding no, the I'll Ogon question. Street Vitalization okay, Corporation, good. a national uh, model of economic community development. And none of that, his why are you running against... His leadership of the powerful budget committee him, just, has earned him the unprecedented endorsement enough. of over 50 legislators across the state. The Philadelphia Daily News, in its endorsement, said, Dwight Evans has a proven record of legislative... That's treasure. We're talking to State Senator Shaka Fatah. He is running for the senatorial seat now held by the Honorable Lou Blackwell. Mr. Blackwell will join us shortly after the 7 o'clock hour tomorrow morning live right here on WHAT. And we're encouraging you to make your choice and go out and vote. How, how do you, uh, what do you want to tell those undecided uh, as, as uh, you feel comfortable and 
and mm -hmm. there's a number of people who are in favor of you and some folks yeah. as you know you're not going to get no matter what you do what do you tell those undecided people well, I think that the real message of our campaign is that if people want things to change, um, then they have to do something different than they've been doing. Uh, that when you have a situation where everyone who is presently in office should be returned to office, which has been the uh, essential suggestion made by some of our city's fathers, um, that uh, there's not much uh, um, that's going to change. Um, and that what we're offering is that um, rather than to uh, really focus on the past, that we want to talk about what's possible, what's doable. Uh, our whole campaign is to say that results count and that we believe that the federal government can do more. And that what we need is, is to really push the envelope. We need to make our case in Congress that cities like Philadelphia deserve more help. That if the Congress can send uh, 14 billion of foreign aid around the world, uh, helping uh, countries all around the globe, that why are they cutting aid to cities? in half over the last 10 years. But, but Chakra, how can you, as a junior congressperson, uh, go into Congress and make a difference and, make, and get all this done when your opponent is, has the, a tremendous amount of seniority, uh, call it a fluke of luck or whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it, he has it. And we always talk and tell our kids about seniority, seniority. We heard that when Congressman Gray ran against uh, uh, the Honorable uh, Nix. Now, wh what are you telling, how are you going to tell people that you can go in there and in two years' time, which actually in a year because then you have to run uh, every two years, so one year in there you got to start running again. What can you do to make it any better? Well, I think that you have to believe, I was interested in that, I was at the White Evans rally the other night and he said that he ran because he first got involved in politics, uh, remembering a quote, uh, I can't remember, I think it was Whitney Young or someone who said that, you know, one person can make a difference. And no, you can't control what happens in this world. But that to the degree that you're a member of a legislative body, you at least get to decide what, what your agenda is, what you're going to talk about, what bills you're going to introduce, and what issues you're going to argue for in the caucus. Uh, you know, the Democratic congressmen get together every day that they're in session and try to move the agenda that they're moving. Um, I don't see how they can decide to keep spending, uh, for instance, uh, this country now is spending more money than the rest of the world combined on defense billions and billions of dollars. Why are we spending more than all the other governments of the world on military activity and, and exotic weapons uh, uh, systems, B-2 bombers and Star Wars? And, 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 and the Democratic caucus, my congressman and the rest of them, have supported these appropriations uh, for the defense budget, um, with only one exception over the last three or four years. So um, why are we spending all this are money? Are you saying that you would not support these? I would not support having 1.4 million people under arms. I would not support us spending hundreds of billions of dollars to protect our economic competitors in Europe and Japan at a time when we don't feel safe in our own neighborhoods. No, I would not. You can't spend a dollar twice. I mean, you spend it on Star Wars or B-2 bombers or nuclear submarines that the Pentagon itself said we didn't need. You can't spend it on fixing up neighborhoods in Philadelphia. You can't spend it on scholarships. You have to make some choices. And I think that since we have been spending so much money on defense for so long, I think we could take a little bit of a break. See, they told us a big lie. They said that when uh, um, $1.9 million in state funding, we delivered a letter to each and every homeowner. For it that was, project? For that project, uh, which is more money than anyone has ever brought into uh, the Winfield community for anything uh, as an elected official. Wait, say this again. One? $1.9 million. Uh, and it's part of a package uh, that me and Councilman Nutter have been working out to read sponsored legislation to provide for assault weapons ban. And I've also uh, been very active here in Philadelphia when the when the assault store owners. Uh, I was the only candidate in this race that showed up in the courtroom supporting uh, the Councilman Ortiz and others in the community organizations, the Black Clergy, uh, the Father's Day Rally Committee, in an effort to deal with that issue. That what did actually happen, the real truth, is that there was a vote in the Senate on an assault weapons ban. I was not on the floor at that time. My vote was cast incorrectly. When I got to it, they're putting out the vote, but they're not putting out the next part, which is the fact that it was a mistake. I'm glad you had no and opinion. so it's not that I voted wrong. I was voted Report. wrong and recorded wrong because of a mistake. Hello? Good morning. Yes, I have two questions. Sure. And I would like, the first one, I want a yes, no 
no answer. Mr. Fatah, good morning. How are you? And good morning. I just want to alert you that sometimes we don't get all that we want in this and life, first but of I'll all, do you, my you best. You can't tell a person how to answer a question, ma'am. You just have to ask it. Um, do you support the Philadelphia Charter Change? No, and I've been opposed to it um, from the uh, the start. And I have uh, made my position very clear um, on the campaign trail uh, throughout this district. And I'm the only candidate in this race who has made their position crystal clear oh. on the what's issue of the charter change. What's your second question? Uh, do you have any suggestions for who would uh, take your place um, when you leave, if you should leave uh, Hasbro? Thank you for well, your question. Well, there are a quarter of a million people in my Senate district who uh, I would, first of all, if I do get an opportunity to go to Congress, would first thank for having supported me. And as I did when I left the State House, I have no intention of trying to uh, push through uh, a successor uh, to me in the Senate. I think that the people of this district, uh, if they chose me and if they chose Senator Hankins, uh, and um, uh, that they are perfectly capable of choosing who they want, and we would have to see uh, who would run. Uh, there are a quarter of a million people. That means that they are probably, you know, a whole lot of people who would be excellent senators, and we would wish them well. Karen, good morning. Good morning, <coughs> Senator. My question concerns prayer in school. What is your position, and what would you do if you are elected in uh, the Congress to uh, advocate for prayer in school, or would you advocate for prayer in school? Thank you, Karen. Um, WHAT had a candidates debate uh, in 1991 uh, with all of the candidates. It's on video, I think, and at least, and also on tape. Uh, and at that uh, setting, uh, both uh, uh, all of the people running at that time, Mr. Blackwell, John White Jr., Dolores Tucker, for, who was in the race for a minute, and Reverend Buford, said that they were for prayer in schools. Uh, I indicated at that time. Uh, that even though uh, I'm a member of Mount Carmel Baptist Church, I believe in the power of prayer, uh, that I don't support prayer in schools. That is to say that in a district and in a mom, uh, as she helped my mother raise six boys, would have us pray uh, before we went to school in the morning, uh, and we would pray at night uh, before we went to bed. I think it's entirely appropriate in the, in the, the time of your life is just a fun this hour, I pray for another hour, because it's, it's yeah. not really professional. Yeah. I'm okay. still November best city councilman Lou Blackwell, and you remember him stopping PGW's rate increase for the first time in the city's history. Passing the set-aside bill to increase contracts for minorities and women to over $600 million. Pushing through approvals for the convention center and Liberty Place 1 and 2, creating thousands of jobs. Well, these days, Blackwell is spending a lot of time in Washington, and they call him Congress. But he's still fighting now. for our interest. As the only African American on the budget committee, Blackwell personally led the effort that brought $46 million in housing funds to the city. He pushed to restore over $700 million in low-income energy assistance funds and prevented cuts of $200 million in rapid transit funding that could have forced our transportation rates even higher. And he supported a $3.6 billion increase in funding for education. On May 10th, pull lever 18 for Congressman Blackwell. Aren't you glad real commitments never change? 15 minutes now before 9 o'clock in Philadelphia, 53 degrees, 581-5186. Our guest in the studio this morning, State Senator Shaka Fatah. He's a candidate for the congressional seat in the 2nd Congressional District. Tomorrow morning on our program, shortly after 8 o'clock, his opponent, the incumbent, Lou Blackwell. The congressman, the Honorable Lou Blackwell, will join us. Enterprise Manufacturing Company is a real manufacturer distributor. Nothing happened or too, too costy right now. Good morning, West Oak Lane. Good morning. Um, Chakabata, I'd like to know, who are you supporting for governor and why, and how do you see yourself working with that person if both of you are elected to office? Thank you. Thank you very much for that, uh, that question. I'm supporting uh, Dwight Evans for governor. Uh, I have, uh, I worked in Dwight Evans' uh, campaign uh, in 1980 when he ran for the state house. Uh, Dwight is a personal friend of mine, uh, but it's really beyond that. Um, I remember being a member of the State House uh, when uh, Wilson Good, and you would remember this, Mary, was complaining that the state was not giving its fair share in terms of children's services in Philadelphia, that it w they were not fully reimbursing the city, and he threatened to go to court, he threatened to send the kids back or do something. 
uh, and it was Dwight who almost single-handedly uh, started a fight on the Florida House that eventually led to us changing the whole way we funded foster care and, and care for abused children in this state to go from to go from a formula where the state would reimburse local cities. Answers to a limit, but uh, we got to do that. West Philadelphia. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You're on. Good morning. Yes, sir. I would like to ask the senator, in reference to going to Congress and voting on a legislation of various sorts, would you, prior to voting and listening to other concerns and lobbyists and whatnot, bring back the concerns and then bring it before a town meeting to the members of your community and listen to their concerns prior to voting on some legislation? Thank, Thank you. Thank you for the question. When I got elected to the state house... Hold it one moment there. Anthony. Make it short. You got it. Thank you. And thank you to the state senator again. Eastbound school traffic is jammed, though. This traffic report of service so of Madison were jammed Valencia, east on the school from Conshohocken through just east of Belmont, it, where there was a disabled I, vehicle blocking the left lane. No, that is gone, think, but the volume yeah, remains. Yeah. You might want to consider you, Bridge Pike to Henry. Thank, Have a great day, thank you so very much. You know, if you need custom draperies or verticals, mini blinds, and you don't know where to get them, come on. We're talking about Go Factory Direct at 2 6. Call Carriage Stop today and tell them Mary told you. Mornings with Mary on WHAT Philadelphia. Good morning, Overbrook. You have a question, please, for our guest. Uh, yes, good morning. Good morning, Shaka. Good morning. Uh, Shaka, I want to talk federal. Uh, now, I, need a, I need a question. I, I, I'm sorry that I have to do this, but I have to limit you to questions. All right. Uh, what do you think of the 115 programs to be cut federal? I think that it is uh, very unfortunate that uh, the Congress would uh, vote to cut 150 domestic programs and essentially leave the defense budget intact, um, even though there's some minor cuts. I, again, I think the biggest problem we have is that we're spending 50 billion more dollars than the rest of the world combined on military expenditures. And I'm not somebody who says, oh, well, we know we you well, but I would like to know, when you do get to Congress, what is the thing that you would emphasize most to start working on first? I think Thank that you. I think that, number one, I'm going to work to try to, uh, I'm going to introduce some legislation that would have us reinvest in cities like Philadelphia in terms of our infrastructure. You know about the water main breaks uh, all across our city. We just had one in West Philadelphia. That's because mm -hmm. these uh, sewer pipes and storm water pipes have been under the city for 100 years, and we, they have to be replaced. There's going to be a lot of jobs, but we're not going to have jobs unless we have the money to pay for it. We're providing infrastructure support all around the world huh? through our foreign aid dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, we can spend some of those dollars fixing up our vacant houses, fixing up our sewer systems, fixing up bridges that are down in our city, like the Canal Street Bridge and other bridges. Uh, we need some work done, and we need some of our federal dollars returned to the city. The other thing I would say is that another gentleman asked, would I stay in touch with people, or would I talk to them before I cast a vote? I think when you're representing people, it's almost as if you're a lawyer. You have to talk to your client. Uh, and um, um, the, I, since when I was elected to the State House, I started having monthly town meetings. Uh, over at, uh, we started at the Holy Cross uh, Church over at um, 63rd and Malvern every month for block captains, committee people, anybody who wanted to come. And I've continued through the years that I've been in public office holding regular meetings uh, with people in my district uh, so that it's not, well, this is how I voted on something. It's like, this is what's coming up. And how do you think about this? Not because I'm going to be led by uh, popular opinion. If I think something's wrong, I'm going to cast my vote that way. Senator, you talk about uh, casting votes, and you, or rather, you talk about uh, drafting legislation. You're going if you if you go to Congress, you're really going to be the new kid on the block. Uh, do you have any familiarity with those persons serving in Congress now? Oh, I know you go to Washington a lot, but I mean, do you have any? What makes you think you're going to get something done down there? I don't have any doubt that I'm going to get something done, and, and that's not because I'm cocky or arrogant. Uh, first of all, Bill Clinton's the new kid on I the block. Say, I didn't I mean, say that. No, no, I know. Other Cocky people said it. You said but, it. No, but, but, but Bill Clinton's new. He's a freshman president. Uh, Ed Rendell's a freshman uh, in his job. Um, that there's, you know, anytime someone new steps into a, a situation, obviously there's a learning curve. I've been spending time in Washington uh, at congressional hearings, reading uh, and studying. I have a tape of some uh, 20 tapes available through the public library, actually, about how Congress works, how the committee system works, and so on. And I oh, know a lot of congressmen. You've been studying I've been this studying job? this, yes, and, and, okay. and it's we, important. We, we must uh, limit, we must keep this at one hour. Good morning. Um, Cobbs Creek? Yes, good morning. Yeah, your question, please. Uh, my question is about veterans. Uh, 
when you have someone experience in the uh, Office for Vet Veterans Affairs, and would you be able to help with the uh, the uh, uh, legal language of uh, new and material to make it more broader instead of now by being now it blocks the veterans from receiving any benefits? Very good question because I get a lot of calls from veterans and that's think, something I, very key. Yeah, I think one of the greatest embarrassments of, of our country is the way we treat veterans. Uh, that you know, a lot of the people who are homeless in our society are people who just a few years ago were fighting in the Persian Gulf War, risking their lives. Uh, for uh, uh, for this uh, for our national policy at that time, however misguided it may have been, um, and that we don't treat people well. The health care that they are provided with, uh, and I know I don't think that I have any special uh, 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 up one-upmanship on this. I know that the incumbent also shares a great concern about veterans, but I do think that we do need quality staff uh, to handle these matters, and I will have uh, in my office people who can handle these matters on behalf of veterans in this district. We have three calls, and we're going to try to take them if you will make your questions brief. Good morning, Skip. Hello. Good morning. Yes, uh, good morning. I, I said it in my language, you said it in yours. Call me Skip. I didn't know you were talking to me. Are, are you Skip? No, I'm not. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Let me go to Skip. Um, good morning. You're on WHAT. Good morning. Good Hello, Hello. Hello. West Philadelphia. Go ahead. How are you doing? Okay. Yeah, for the state senator, I'm wondering, I had gone down to the election commission and uh, looked up a Xerox copy of some of the campaign contributions from back in 98. H-A-T, Philadelphia. That are listed for you are Harrisburg addresses, such as the Hospital Association PAC. I'm wondering if these are still the contributors that you're having. For this campaign. Thank you for your question. Well, I guess you'll have to take your trip down to the library again or wherever you said you got it from. Uh, the reality is, is that the majority of my contributions have come uh, from Philadelphians, uh, from African Americans and others in this district. I'm very pleased that we've raised money and in, in the way that we've raised it. We have no contributions to be embarrassed about. And um, I don't have any defense contractors. Military people are making bombs, uh, giving me contributions. Uh, so I think that. Uh, everybody who's contributed, we thank them. We want others to contribute. And I think it is of note that, uh, again, this is another indication that the only thing the other campaign can figure to do is to try to tear me down. They would probably do a little bit better Senator, if they tried to build I, him Senator, up. Senator, I want to hold, I want to hold the point there because, you, you know, I've got to tell you something. Uh, both you and the congressman, in my opinion, have ran very high-level campaigns. Uh, I don't know what's happening, you know, in little clutches and corners. But I have not, on this air, have heard you say anything uh, disrespectful about the congressman, and he certainly has not said anything disrespectful about you. And I'd like to see this thing keep on the high road, because I think people are really not interested in where y'all sleep or where y'all go after the get it. They, they want to know, what are you going to do to make life better for me? Uh, the congressional seat is the highest honor and seat that an African American is holding and will hold from Pennsylvania. And, and I really want to spend as much time as I can talking about what you're going to do to make that second congressional district, by the way, of which I live in, which I work in, better. Uh, the congressman will be here tomorrow for an hour, and I don't know, maybe it'll be necessary for you gentlemen to come back. Maybe I can get you guys back on Friday or Monday, because I think this race is important enough to do that. Thank well, I'm you. I'm available. Thank you for coming. Well, thank you for having me. And let me thank your listeners, uh, many of whom never call, but I meet out at their uh, doors uh, as we're out campaigning. Thank you for your interest in the race, and uh, we look forward to uh, Election Day. And I think all of us have to just accept whatever is the reality on Election Day in terms of what the voters say in this district. You have two-minute wrap-up time. Well, let me say that, unfortunately, there's been some distortion of my record. Um, there's some notion that I didn't bring in additional money for education that's been put out by the other campaign. The truth is that, yes, we did, and, and that Group Hare, who's on the school board, who was the former president, has said it in a, uh, a commercial that's been taped for this show. But more importantly, the incumbent has said it. The last time he was on the show, he talked about the fact that uh, Dwight Evans and uh, Senator Williams and FUMO uh, brought in additional dollars and saved the school district from losing money. Uh, that, well, that's the same budget I voted for. In fact, it's the same budget that I led on that issue, that I fought for, to put those dollars in. Uh, and so since I've been in Harrisburg, we've brought home additional money for the school district, not a cut of $30 million. But more importantly, What's there's been some notion that I'm ambitious, and I want to put that to rest. Um, 
you know, Bill Clinton started out as the Attorney General of Arkansas and then ran for governor and then ran for well, president. What, what, what's, what, what's wrong with being ambitious? No, I know. And, and I'm trying to just settle the, the settled issue. The incumbent was speaking at a candidate's forum. Uh, last there you night. Go with that again. Well, I, I have to make this point. It's not a negative point to him, though. So don't, it's really not. He said that I was ambitious, and I just want to deal well, that's with this. A compliment. I know, and he was ambitious when he ran to be head of his union or ward leader, when he ran for state rep, and for city council, and for mayor twice, and for Congress. There's nothing wrong with ambition. The issue here is who is producing the results for our community. I'm not the only person with ambition in this race. And so I think that the issue is so on education, on ambition. jobs, look at our records, well, look at housing, look at our leadership issues. Um, both of us are good people. At least I think What's he's a good person. Uh, and um, I think that the issue has to go far beyond that. It's what can we do First to make thing. the federal government live up to its broken promises to cities like Philadelphia and to oh. our children and to the people who deserve to have as decent yeah. a future uh, as uh, those who come before them. Uh, and those will come after them. So we need to do more. Well, while we're talking ambition, when you, if you go to, to Congress, uh, are you going to be running for the United States Senate next? <laughs> no, I, but I do we're hope. Gonna, you don't have to I ask do hope that. one day to be here. You know, we'll be running for uh, <laughs> you don't president. Have to ask that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming in. Our guest this morning, ladies and gentlemen, State Senator Shaka Fatah. This is Phil Valenti, yeah. Democrat yeah, for good. governor. Shaka. The new age brainwashing of children in the schools coming. must stop. Uh, Outcome-based uh, education, or OBE, must be disbanded. Who? Are you serious? Harding Williams endorsing you? It's based on the bogus theories of Arthur Jensen and Benjamin. So I've been telling you all off the record how many board leaders you got. I hear, I hear you have 19. Intelligence is genetic. I really don't. I have and that poor kids something less than 19. Kids, minority I mean, kids there are 23 board leaders in, in your district. Right. They should be so, menial something jobs. Something a little bit slightly more than half. So you got a 50. OBE is pure totalitarianism, so where children oh, are well, psychologically tested this, and this, manipulated. This, 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 Call Valenti for governor okay. at 215 6 Is he happy with the endorsement they the got? opportunity to attend college. Our future has a gubernatorial race. There's nothing pertaining to the gubernatorial race in this area at all. You have to call the gubernatorial race. help, but you know, I, I really think you're, you're, you're asking me to pour your milk in the morning. If there are no uh, paraphernalia and, and, and information, point of purchase material, call the gubernatorial candidate's office and tell them that. Well, we did. They're going to deliver some. Well, so now why are you calling me? <laughs> I just want you just won't bother me this morning, don't you? Not real. <laughs> Thank you, Louise. Good day. Thank you very much. I appreciate the call. Good morning, West Philadelphia. Uh, Mary? Yes, sir. Lorenzo, how are you? Uh, is this Reverend Shepard? Yes, sir. Good morning, doctor. How are you? I'm doing all right. Good. Yes. Well, thank you. This is a pleasure to hear from you. Of course. I don't hear from you too often. Yes, no, I, I think that this is, of course, a very uh, critical period, you know, in the political history of our city. And I wanted to make certain uh, that the reference made uh, uh, by the uh, previous uh, speaker concerning clergy endorsement needs to be... Uh, uh, set straight. Now, what did it, what, because it's been so far back in the hour, what did my guest say? mentioned about endorsements of clergy groups and et cetera. But, I mean, did he call any names? No, no he didn't call any. Okay, all right, I just want to be clear on it. Oh, oh no, we, we're not, we're not going to call any names either. Okay. But what I wanted to do was to let, uh, uh, our listeners know, and I say our listeners because your listeners are also <laughs> our listeners that uh, the overwhelming majority of clergy persons in this city of, of all persuasions and denominations are in support of Lucian Blackwell. And the only publicity basically that has been given was given uh, by an endorsement by the uh, Black Clergy of Philadelphia or the United Black Clergy, whatever they call themselves. And they have consistently opposed Congressman Blackwell uh, in, in all of their endeavors. And uh, I just wanted uh, that record set straight. And just on yesterday, the Missionary Baptist Pastors Conference of Philadelphia and vicinity for the first time in its history to have pride in their representation. And the Speaker of the House fully has spoken in my presence of the fine record that uh, Congressman Blackwell has compiled, the chaplain, of the House of Representatives, I had the uh, good fortune to 
uh, deliver the prayer before the House of Representatives because of our congressmen. And I have talked to many of the persons who are part of the Congressional Black Caucus. And, and Congressman Blackwell just has a kind of record and relationships with others. It just makes me feel proud. And I'm sure that the members, of, of the constituents of the 2nd Congressional District are not going to be persuaded uh, to change horses in the middle of a good stream. I'm reminded of a fellow who was selling uh, uh, yes, some horses, and he all right. told the buyer, this horse has a great record, and, and he, he's done this, and he won this race, and he won that race, and then he showed him another horse. He said, you know, I want you to know uh, that this horse is going to, like a good to win joke. some races. He has a great future. And so finally, the buyer the said, meantime, well, I'm listen, thank you so very, very much, behind. but I'm not interested in a has been or a will be -a. Will you show me an am is -a? Uh, Congressman Blackwell is an am is -a, and he has the support of the church community of, of this city, and I just want to set the record straight, and, and thank you so very, very much. Thank you for calling. Good talking to you, Reverend. Talk to you. Thank you very much. We'll be right back. Because it's not fair for him to say he has the support of the church, because they're split. But, yeah. oh, you get to a point. Okay, where is Sunny Fatah? Excuse me. Oh. Well, you'd be glad come Wednesday morning, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. No, I, I, I actually, I'll tell you, I think I'll be glad come Tuesday because I don't think any people pay much attention. But yes, Wednesday morning, I think it would probably be into the night if it's as close as they say it is. Yeah. yeah. David, this person hung up? Yes. Okay, uh, the, the only thing that I have a problem with uh, with the politician in, in particular, uh, 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 Chopper, this morning, uh, they always say what they're going to do when they get in their seat. Now, now, Gray said it, and then Lou Blackwell said it, but he's doing more than I think even Gray did it. All that time he was there in Chocasan, just like... Reverend Gray, and he can't do that by himself. He got to say, when I get there, I'm going to do the best I can because all those guys that have been sitting there all this time on their butts that wasn't, they're not black, wasn't doing nothing, and you need those guys. And, and, and I just look at it that they shouldn't do that because and he, then he'll jump up after two, three years there and do just like Reverend, Reverend, Reverend Gray. He'll be gone. And that's what I like to say is they should watch what they say because they can't bring nothing home unless they all get together and vote on it. And I thank you, Miss Mason. Thank you so very much for your call. Good morning, you're on WHAT, West Philly. Good morning, Miss Mason. Good morning, sir. The only comment I want to make is when I hear the attributes of young, dedicated, intelligent, uh, educated, one that has not forgotten where he's come from, when I hear somebody say that, here, that what we tell all our young people to do, to go to school and dedicate yourself to a particular task and job and just want to help people, well, when those attributes are applied to Dwight Evans, it's okay. But when you say the same thing about Senator Fatah, then people have a problem with it. And I don't understand that. We tell our young men and women to be the best that they can be and try to do their very best and to help people. And here are two young men that are trying to do that, Dwight Evans and State Senator Fatah. Why do people have a problem with a young man who is trying to do just that? Help. Well, you, that, that, that's kind of understood. Um, you got to remember, uh, Congressman Blackwell is is a very special person in this community. I agree. Um, Congressman Blackwell, heck, I can't remember too many elections where his name wasn't out there in some way or another, be he supporting someone or running. Congressman Blackwell has, has been a very grassroots person. I can appreciate people not wanting to throw away people who have served, but I also understand what you say when you, when you say the door should be open for new blood. I mean, I, I understand both sides of it. Okay. I just want people to be fair in their thinking. I understand, 
uh, that people have this warm feeling to Congressman Blackwell. I certainly do. I, I, I know Janie and, and Mr. Blackwell uh, pretty well, and I think they're good people. But I also feel the same way about Senator Fatah, especially his mother, because they both have helped me over the years, and they've helped millions of people, thousands, millions of people. Here's a young man that has done what we ask of our young people to do. He has achieved, he has worked hard, he has dedicated Hi, himself. And don't just take anyone's word for anything. Just check the records yourselves out there and make the best choice on May 10th. Thank you. Thank you very much for your call. Good morning. You're on WHAT, Mount Airy. Yes, I'm one because I just want to say something about the young and the old. First of all, yes, I believe in young people, but I believe that older people can still kick it out. Now, I don't know how old Blackwell is, but I think the man is vigorous, he's smart, he's been there. He's a but, but wait a minute. Why do we have to make an age <laughs> run out of this? Uh, wait just a moment, Jean Joy. Why do we have to? I, I never thought about Mr. Blackwell's age or Fatah's. I never thought about it. And 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 I don't think at this time in the election that it should be. You know, you got uh, Reagan, who he, at least he claimed he ran the country in his 70s. Uh, you've got Strong Thurmond down there. You got some of them so old. I, I think they've forgotten how old they are. I think it's about the job that they do. And if and if you believe that at whatever age and, and state of life that Mr. Blackwell is in, that he's doing the job, then that's the person you have to vote for. Right, and that's exactly what I'm doing. I think the man's doing a good job. I, I, I think about Mandela. I just think about people just growing through their whole Sure, Mandela is 75 years old. He's getting ready to lead a country. Right, you know, so that's my that's where my heart is this morning. It's with Blackwell and it's with experience and it's with, with a man that has worked through the years and I'm for Blackwell. But see now you just slid down the ladder because you said that's where my heart is. You didn't say that's where your head is. Thanks for your call. Good morning. West Philadelphia. Uh good morning, Miss Lady. Good morning, Lenny. I just like to make a few comments and I took your advice years ago by keeping a scorecard. That's the way to do it. And I look at Congressman Blackwell. All the groups that I support give him a 100% rating. And I like to know what, what could he do different. The thing that bothers me the most, and I hear some people say he spends too much time feeding the homeless and the poor. And that bothers me. There's one thing I know about Congressman Blackwell, and it hurts him a lot. He really is a Christian. Well, where did you hear these people say this? Because I, they don't say that on this program. I heard some statements that Mount Airy spends too much time. Well, why didn't you straighten those people out? I did. Believe me, I did. But, I'm, you know, just by hearing that, even the Daily News mentioned it, that he spends too much time with the poor and the homeless. Well, I, I haven't read anybody who has publicly said he spends too much. Uh, I don't think anybody would publicly say that. You might have gotten that in a private conversation. But that's an ugly thing to say. Uh, the work that uh, Congressman Blackwell has done with the homeless, in my opinion, is, is superb. I mean, because homeless people are human beings. They are people. As a matter of fact, uh, President Clinton, I believe, named his, uh, Congressman Blackwell to a high particular uh, office in terms of the homeless uh, committee. So, you know, his, word, his work with the homeless it stands out alone. Oh, I agree 100%. Thank you very much. Thank you. Reservations of $35 each. We have an exciting program lined up for you. Hundreds of thousands of dollars in door prizes and just a wonderful afternoon for families to get together. It's a family theme. On this Sunday, promptly at 2 o'clock at 12 Seasons. Doors open at 1 o'clock. Program starts at 2. America's Music your area. Theater Festival but presents they, they, the world premiere of the Mystery of Love. It's the story of today. two men, they right want, from friends, and the woman um, who comes between them. They want you to them. be... Sophisticated yeah, education. It's not such a year from the turn of the And it's our fault. I mean, it's not our fault, but it's funny because this is what we taught. I mean, my kid is not going to vote the way I vote. No, it was my grandchild. So, but fortunately for me, I've kept kind of abreast of things. But I'm going to see a different it's romantic, kind, different it's sexy, kind of thing. It's passionate. Well, what would get him upset? <laughs> it's <laughs> great music. It's great <laughs> theater. It's the mystery of love, and it's running May 10th. He's an emotional man, Mr. Blackwell. He's a good person, but he is, without question, an emotional man. That's 567-0670. Good morning. We're talking politics this morning, and um, I'd like to hear from some of the undecided voters. It would be very interesting at this point in our program to talk to some of the folks out there who even with our guest today and yes we'll do the same after our guest tomorrow are you still undecided 
in the second congressional oh, district. Oh, district. Of course, if you live in another district, it won't help very much, but you may very well want to talk about yours. We haven't talked a lot about the first congressional district because, well, for whatever reasons. But let me hear from you, 581-5186, if you haven't uh, made up your mind. And maybe you can tell us why, and that will give our guests some meat. If necessary, and only if necessary, uh, we'll try to bring these two candidates back another day. We'll see just how things work out. West Philadelphia, good morning. Good morning, Mary. You still have my prayers for your children. Um, I would like to just thank the church for making their position very clear about Congressman Blackwell. But, you know, it wasn't fair for me to let Reverend Shepherd, and I know him, get away with saying the church because in all fairness and believe me Rachel it has been a, not an easy job for me these last few weeks in all fairness all the churches are not supporting Mr. Blackwell I know and it, and and I allowed him you know I I I think back now I let him get away with that Lorenzo Shepherd is a fine man but Lorenzo Shepherd does not speak for all the churches any more than he can probably speak for all his members, as I cannot speak for all of my family. That's true. And it was only fair that I should have said, thank you, kind Reverend. I have a lot of love and respect for Lorenzo. But there are a group of ministers, and you heard them on this program yesterday, separate themselves from those ministers who did not go along with their endorsement. They did it very fairly yesterday, and that's the one thing I have to try to keep going on this program these last few days, is fairness. Yes, but I, I'm just grateful that the main body... And, and well, see, I don't know if that's the main body because we didn't call names, Rachel, and you're not a minister, so you can't speak for them. I know I can. Okay, and don't try. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. You, 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 you guys got to know this is, this is a hard one to carry today, but I'm going to do my best. There is a great deal at stake. It's Philadelphia. Yes, hi, Mary. Fine, thank you, Larry. Uh, I, I'm... Just getting into the voting scene, and I've always voted, but I never uh, gave much thought into who I was voting for. I was just voting because my family was voting one way. You know, you're honest. Uh, you know there's a lot of people still do that, uh, either go by what their family has said, but are you really into this one, and that's why you're undecided? Uh, very much so. And what it is is, um, in a way, I like for Todd because he's for education. And uh, I've come a long way, and I'm a senior in college now. However, um, I respect my elders, and Lucian, that's all I keep hearing is that what he's done, and I mean the great things that he's done, and I'm just, I'm just lost. And my fraternity supports one, and then my family supports the other, and I, I don't know what to do. And I, I didn't go to class today yet. You're cute. You really sound lost. Well, you got to do something about that. Were you able to hear uh, Senator Fatar? Yes, ma'am. Okay, tomorrow morning, shortly after 7, because Mr. Blackwell does have to go to Washington. Uh, that's one thing. He was elected to, to vote in Washington. Will you be able to hear Mr. Blackwell? I sure will. I'd like for you, um, Larry, to call me back tomorrow okay. after Mr. Blackwell leaves. I, I, I'm real interested in seeing uh, if you make up your mind and... And, and you don't have to tell us tomorrow, by the way, who you made up your mind for, but we'd like to kind of find out why you made up your mind, your mind and what caused you to do so. Okay. I, I hope, though, that you can just consider the two men without considering age. I, I don't know how that's going to be. I, I, just, I just have a problem with these people who say that, who, who deal with age. Well, the factor until today's show. And then, uh, like, Shepard and people like that that I've known throughout my, you know, uh, in relation to the family, uh -huh. and these issues, uh, a couple of people spoke on age, and I never looked at it like that, but you made a good point. It's, um, one lady took it to heart and she didn't, uh, take it to mind. So that's why yeah. it even confused me more. You know why, uh, Larry, I've been hearing that a lot oh, since last Saturday. I've been hearing people say, if I go with my heart, I'll vote for so-and-so. But if I go with my head, I'll vote for so-and-so. Well, I, you don't have to be in love with nobody. You're not, that, you know, you've got to believe that the person that you vote for is truly the person whose past record has demonstrated they bring home the bacon. See, this whole deal is about bringing home the bacon. 
I mean, this whole deal is not about promises, and I, that's why I have to go back to the gentleman who called earlier. You know, look, all politicians promise you things. They promise you their mother-in-law. Yeah, as soon as I heard that, I'm like, well, that's politics. Yeah, but we don't want to hear that. You, you want to look at their records. Uh, you want to look, has, has Fatah brought home the bacon from Harrisburg? Has Blackwell brought home the bacon from uh, uh, Congress? And it's not fair just to think of, of uh, Blackwell's congressional record. Remember, he has a council record, a legislative record before that. And, 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 and since much of his time was spent in council, I think people, although yes, I, I, I gotta say, it's more difficult to bring that bacon home from Washington than, than it is from City Hall. It's far more difficult. But still in all, if you're going to consider records, you got to include it all. So I want you to hang with me. I want you to give me a break. Okay, Ms. Mason, one, one more thing. I'm a, uh, when I graduate, I'll be a teacher. And the thing that just kind of sway me is um, usually one or two issues with each, week, uh, with each candidate. Uh-huh. Uh, Saka Patai has done a lot as far as education. And... It's like these one or two issues, and I, I really want to vote sincerely this time. It's not, I don't want to vote because I'm either Republican or I'm Democrat, or I was raised this way, or... Well, and, and you're going to have to vote uh, because you're Republican or Democrat on Tuesday, because I'm you can just, only vote that way. Right, I'm saying, um, but now I want to look more into the issues, and I appreciate the show this morning. Matter of fact, I came in from jogging, and I heard the show, I said, oh, no, this is the opportunity, I'm sick of reading. Support yeah, that's why I, I tried today, and I'll try tomorrow. I don't want the guests that you know. This is this is a very very expensive hour I'm giving up. I mean, I I can't afford this luxury. Uh, I'm tied down now, way behind. But that's why I wanted to do this, and I don't want the candidates to spend time talking about what each other have said. I don't mind them setting the record straight. I think it's important that they set the record straight. So, so hang in there, you know, uh, Larry. Give us a chance about tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Mr. Okay, right. thank you. Bill Anderson's here to billboard. What's going to happen right after ten o'clock this morning? Good morning, Bill. But he, he, or I'll go. I'll, I'll get out. Let's get out of the second congressional district now. Right. Listen, but she's so nice. She's such a warm person. She's got five kids, mm -hmm. and you know, he doesn't have any kids. He's a young bachelor. He can wait his term. Right. But who's you know, working? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think that something people, we right, yeah. something that we often talk about is maybe one of the reasons that we have so many problems with politicians is you're voting with your heart. They make decisions with their head. And that's why in the first congressional district, uh, people don't understand uh, the Harvey Clark uh, Foglietta thing. They're saying that. Huh. Mary, why don't you just tell us a little bit about what the radio show is and what you what you're trying to do what you're trying to do with it. Well, I, I guess, well, you, of course, we know it's talk radio. I, I try to go beyond what most talk radio shows do. Uh, and I think, it, it, particularly because it's uh, geared toward the African-American community, and we were so long getting and still trying to get and, and, and maybe need more. I, um, I try to be a, sol a problem solver more than listen you, it's easy to listen to the problems everybody who calls particularly because i'm on the air in the morning has a problem but we go beyond that we um we we, we talk about the solutions and we find and get the solutions and i think that's why we end up being uh, as political as we are because in this country the answer to the problems is generally political so coming on the air early in the morning uh, gives us, if you will, an advantage of hearing people first off and uh, having them get off their minds the things and the desires that they need. And so we extend ourselves to the uh, elected officials and appointed officials because these are the people who are in those places to solve these problems. So I'd like to believe that uh, my talk show, you know, here on WHAT, goes way beyond who's sleeping with who, um, who did this uh, 25 years ago? But I'd like to think it's today. It's a now type of show. You know, there's a general perception, I think, in this country that, that all Americans are kind of fed up with politics. They don't get involved. And I think that's especially true that a lot, I think a lot of whites perceive that African Americans are not particularly into politics. They don't turn out to vote, you know, all that kind of stuff. Do you believe that's true? 
Well, it, it is true that a large number of African Americans don't turn out, but if you really look at the figures, you will see where a large number of all kinds of people don't turn out. Uh, you take a celebrity or a star who we now know what they make, making uh, 50 million, 60 million dollars a year. What do they need a president for? What do they care? The president needs them. Uh, I think the, the, the people who vote are the same people, yes, over and over again. But I see, a, I see something new rising. I see a young, uh, sophisticated audience of college students and young married couples who really are interested in politics. And I've got to tell you something. It didn't hurt at all that Bill Clinton won the presidency and caused some of this. People relate to their peers and he is indeed their peers. Uh, here, I am seeing, uh, not only in this race here in the 2nd Congressional District, I am seeing, as I go around to the schools, we now can register um, children in school. I'm seeing a lot of it happen. It takes a while for it to show up on the books, but you gotta be out there and not just read the newspapers to find out what's going on. But I mean, listen, You're a, you have this, this radio show, it's extremely popular. Do politicians seek you out? Do they seek out your endorsement? Do they seek to be on the show? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. They, they, they'd be very smart to do that. Um, though we do address all issues around the campaign time, we um, do more uh, politics, and primarily because a lot of African-American people don't read as much as they should. Uh, they have all kinds of excuses why they don't buy papers. Look, I read seven newspapers before I come into this office in the morning. I read, I, actually, I read five, and I read uh, two additional ones when I get here. I'm not so sure that I haven't spoiled uh, my African-American community. They don't buy the paper. Mary will read it to us. Um, but yes, the politicians know that I have perhaps the largest African-American and a tremendous Caucasian and Oriental audience, and I've been doing it longer than anybody in this town. And when they want to, even before I, they come on the air and seek an endorsement, I can't think of too many people who choose to run for office in Pennsylvania, let alone Philadelphia, who doesn't at some time give me the courtesy of a phone call and want a visit. And I try to see them all. Um, they don't all listen to my advice, but at least I give it to them. Why do you think, why do you think people listen to you? Well, first of all, my credibility is, is so solid. Um, I'm a lot of years in this business. Yeah, sorry, could, would you mind including my question in your answer? People oh, okay. I think people listen to me because... I think people listen to me because of my credibility. Uh, I'm a lot of years in this business. Uh, I could easily sit here and say, well, they listen to me because I feed the hungry and I clothe the naked, and I do. But I think they listen because uh, there's not a lot of consistency uh, they, you can't tell what Mary Mason's going to say in the morning. I mean, you could very well listen to me the night, the day before and say, oh, I know what she's going to do tomorrow. As a matter of fact, I will walk into a public establishment and someone will say, hush, oh, shh, here she comes. She'll talk about you in the morning. But I think because I get involved in all of the issues and because I bring the people on the air who are directly responsible for whatever the problem is, and then bring the person whom I think can solve it on. In other words, we get results on our program, and I believe that's why people listen to me over the years. Uh, best proof is I took a hiatus. I decided this is it, you know, and I went off the air. And it was like, I, I, you, can't, you can't believe it. I mean, I couldn't go any place. I still can't go any place. But I, I'm, I'm very pleased with that. I'm very happy, and I'm very respectful of that. Um, for whatever it is, it does not go to my head because I know it's here today and gone tomorrow. But I enjoy the fact that people, they won't make decisions until they call me or they find out where I'm going or what I'm going to do. And anything that we give is supported to the highest. And that to me is an honor and a trust that you must always guard. So do you make endorsements? Do you take positions on your show? I do. I take, I make I like to call what I make, not endorsements, I make recommendations. I have a thing called political scorecard. We begin to keep a political scorecard on an elected official from the day he or she is sworn in uh, for the first time. And we keep those scorecards. We've got some scorecards that go back 20 years. Uh, we have the negatives and the positives on those. 
If it's a person who has never served in public office, we go back into whatever it is they've been doing. We have a classic example of that going on right here in Philadelphia now. Because no matter what you aspire to be, it is important where you've been to tell where you're going. So I do keep a scorecard. And the day before the election, and I, I purposely wait until the day before the election because I want to be fair and I want to be honest. And I don't mind being challenged, but once I make that uh, recommendation, it's a lock. Uh, I am very fortunate that I've never, ever been on any politician's payroll. I've never accepted anything beyond a dozen roses. Uh, and so I, I'm very free. I'm unbossed and unbought. And I think you need to be that way in order for people to believe that what you're saying is solidly because of that person's contribution. Do you think that a similar institution like your show would be as important if it was in the white community? Absolutely. We've got a couple like that. We, we've got some white um, talk show hosts who try to be a Mary Mason type. But, you know, it, it's not easy. I started talk radio in Philadelphia. Nobody was doing talk radio. No station was doing it. And I just started it by accident. There was a need in this city for Opportunities Industrialization Center founded by Reverend Sullivan. We needed money. The, the current mayor at that time cut off the funding. And I stopped playing records and said, we got to get some money and we got to stop begging everybody else for it. And that's what led to the talk radio. And I'm going back in way before the 70s. Interesting. Let's talk a little bit about this, this race this, that everyone's talking about. What's, what's going on? This is the second congressional? Well, you know, it, it started out almost as a joke, but it is not a joke today. And here we are five days before the election. Uh, the current incumbent, Congressman Blackwell, whom I have always supported. I have supported him from day one. I think he's a fine man. I think he's an honorable person. He is probably one of the most creditable uh, politicians uh, that I know. He's a dedicated, hard-working person. But I can also put those credentials on his opponent. Um, I believe that when this thing started and his opponent, Shaka Fatah, got into the race and people felt, oh, you know, he's just, he's just climbing, he's ambitious, he's aggressive. But these are all the things that we ask the politicians to be. And at this five-day point now, it's no longer a joke. Uh, most people are saying this race is too close to call. Uh, I had some learned uh, ward leaders on the program last week, and one of them said, if the election were held today, we'd have a new congressperson. Uh, I don't buy that yet. I believe that, yes, it's going to be close, but I, I believe that endorsements and recommendations are not going to be the turning point. I think the turning point is going to be clearly the records and the turnout. That's, is, that's going to do it. I'm not sure on Monday how I'm going to handle this. I'm really not sure, but I know I will handle it. One of the things that a number of people who are observing the race have told us is that this is a... Uh, I don't know if I could use the word nasty, but it's a hard-fought race, and there's a lot of passion. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard-fought race, but fortunately, it's not, it hasn't been nasty. It has, been on, it has taken the high road. Oh, there have been... I think the things that have been on the low road have not come from the candidates. You've got to remember, uh, you have people working around you who do things that they think are in your best interest, but it's really to save their jobs. And I personally, and I've said this to everybody that I could say, I believe that Congressman Blackwell, if for any reason he has a problem, it is the people who work for him. He's a good man. He believes in helping the downtrodden. Unfortunately, sometimes the downtrodden never gets up, even when they get a better job. Uh, you can't buy class. Money doesn't come with instructions. And so though they may now be in a better paying job, they still have their old tacky manners, and it's hurting Congressman Blackwell. Uh, Mr. Fatah, uh, Senator Fatah, being that he's a lot younger, has come up with a different and more sophisticated so-called college-oriented type audience of, of fans. And this, this is the difference that you see there. I'm not sure it's, it's going to work, but I tell you one thing. They've kept it clean among themselves, um, whatever happens, Pennsylvania, the second congressional district, is lucky. We are fortunate. We are blessed. I wish we could put two senators, two congressmen in there from the same district. 
in a lot of races, I don't know if that's the case here, but in a lot of races where you have two black candidates running against each other, there's always charges that one or the other candidate is the candidate of the white business, the white yeah. media, the white... Yeah. What, what's going on? Well, there? that happened with Bill Gray, because uh, uh, former Congressman Bill Gray, who's now head of the United Negro College Fund, there is a perception in the black community that white people accept certain types of blacks, and it's probably true. They like you to look not white, but they like you to look light-skinned. They like you to have a lot of education when most, when a lot of them don't. And Bill Gray had those things. Bill Gray was a very charismatic person. So is Shaka Fatah. Mr. Blackwell is not as charismatic. He's an emotional person. He's very emotional, but he's always been like that. But he's gotten the job done. And so, to answer your question, um, I think that that is going to be an advantage for Fatah uh, because he not only will appeal to that element of whites, he's going to appeal to the youth, which in this case there are a lot more of them out there because he's registered with them. He's gone to high schools, wherein Lou Blackwell has been accustomed to just doing the things that he felt is best for the community and not necessarily uh, dealing with uh, the younger people. He, he, he's been identified more with the homeless, and he's done a tremendous job with the homeless. But what worries people is that a lot of the homeless people may not vote, and this may hurt him. Let me, let me ask you just to follow up that question with something more global. Why is that so important that the, white, the whites might be supporting one candidate over another? Well, be, because you have, a, you have a, 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 a black people out there believe that, as you probably heard on the show this morning, if the white community is supporting a candidate, that that candidate will be in their pocket, that they will vote their interests. When in actuality, it's unfair because the white interest is the same as the black interest. I mean, the difference between us is we have different colors of skin and we live in different addresses, but we all have the same needs. Basically, there are more poor whites numerically than there are poor blacks. But this is the kind of stigma that either the press or whatever has allowed to prevail, and it's going to be years before you can root it out. Yeah, just a question that... It seems like almost now the difference between black and Fatah is one of style, because they're almost identical. Style is a very good answer. The difference between them is style. I thank you for giving me that. I'm going to use that tomorrow. Yes, it is style. Um, again, uh, Shaka Fatah, uh, he's a graduate of the Wharton School, I believe, with an MBA. Um, he's, a, he's, he's tall. He's Naturally, he's a good-looking young man, and he embraces many of the youth as well as the senior citizens. His mother has a long-standing community record. Lou Blackwell is, as I said, emotional, totally different in style. Uh, um, you don't find people using the word class when they talk about Blackwell. But do, do you need that to distinguish yourself in terms of bringing goods and services? This is the thing that people have to make up their minds on. But you're right. The word style is a classic example of what we're dealing with. And, I, you, and you know, people vote on style. They vote on looks. Um, and when actuality, they should vote on records. But let's compare the two gentlemen's records. They both have great records. They both have outstanding records. There was something... You have yeah, I have another question. There's a, there's a, the question of uh, voting with your heart and voting with your mind yeah. came up a bunch of times. Yeah. And I just, you know, I wonder what, what's, your, what's your attitude? Well, about when that? I say voting with your heart, there are people who will say Mr. Blackwell is older, uh, he's, he feeds the homeless, that's, that's a heartbeat uh, comment. comment. Um, he's always there when you need him. Uh, they will say, Shaka Fatah is young, he's got time. Uh, and so the heart vote will go with Lou Blackwell, and the head vote will go with Fatah. That's really not fair. The head vote should be the only vote. Because as I said you know, on the air this morning, people said, well, then I'm not excited. Well, you don't get excited on politics. Sex is something that's supposed to excite you. Um, the, these two men have got to, in these last few days, as close as they say this uh, election is, they've got to get out there and deal with their record. That's what's going to do it. There, there has been, however, it seems to us at least, a certain amount of divisiveness, I think, about this race. I mean, just, the, just simply the idea that a younger guy would, would come and try to 
would try to take would take on an older an older respected mm -hmm. uh, figure in the black community. I mean, well, you you have to remember the the fight in this race is over a very big prize. The congressional seat is the highest seat of honor that an African American has and probably will hold, certainly in my lifetime, in Pennsylvania. Beyond that, it's the United States Senate, and you know how difficult that is for an African American to win. And so. For Ta, obviously, as in the case, you must remember, of his predecessor, Bill Gray ran against a 20-year congressperson, a distinguished attorney, uh, Robert N.C. Nix. And the same things were said about Bill Gray. Why are you running against this older man who's been there? He's got seniority. Uh, you ought to wait. You've got plenty of time. I think Bill was about the same age as for Ta is. Bill Gray ran. He lost. We knew he'd come back. He came back. He won. Shaka Fatah may very well lose this race because of the heart vote this time. But if he does, he's coming back. And eventually, it is my belief, whether he wins it this time or the next time, he's going to sit in that seat. He's had his designs on it for some time. Fatah had his designs on this seat when Bill Gray was there and indeed immediately ran for it, lost the last time, coming back now. And he is not going to lose so dangerously if he loses at all. Uh, Fatah, when he was on your show, he was talking about money and how the money is being spent. He yeah. said something I didn't quite understand, which is that on Election Day, Blackwell would be very busy as far as his street army, but that Fatah would not forget you know, what was going on Election Day, that he would be there for people. What does that mean? Well, well you know, what, it, what you have here is heretofore, uh, whichever one of the candidates that the Democratic machine, the so-called party machine, backed, that was generally the winner. I mean, you just didn't stand a chance in a primary if you weren't backed by the machine. Unfortunately, the machine is weak. The Democratic machine in Philadelphia is not nearly as strong as it once was. And so there are a number, a large number of, of uh, elected officials who have won without their support. And the reason they needed their support is the money. They have this thing called street money. And this is several hundred thousand dollars that the party gives to a candidate to what, do what they call get the vote out. Well, Fatah has a machine. He, he devised and put together and organized a machine when he was 14, 15 years old. This kid's not a newcomer on the block. He's been out there a long time. And he has kept that machine intact all of this time. So there's no danger in him losing anything because of the party. As you heard him on the show this morning, he's got 12 or 14 ward leaders out of 23. Mr. Blackwell is a former leader of the ward leaders. He's a former black ch a chairman of the black uh, Philadelphia ward leaders. He is a ward leader. Fatah is not a ward leader. So you, you can see the, the balance there. So when they get out on the street or they start out on uh, Tuesday for the election, it's going to mean giving dollars to young ward and division workers to bring the vote in. Fatah has, as does Mr. Blackwell, a very dedicated group of college students. Here's a young man that bussed 10 to 12 buses into Virginia for Doug Wilder, bussed buses up to Chicago, up to Illinois for Carolyn um, uh, Mosley Braun. He's been all over the country doing that. Well, there, you can believe me, there are going to be a lot of bus rental, rented, buses rented on that day. He's going to bring a lot of people in. So what, how does that work? works well, because it means that you don't have to worry about the party covering the polling places. You cover them because the party will be covering them for the p person that they endorse. Well, I mean, so when you say they bring in buses, who's on the buses? Who, who Co they? College students and volunteers who knock on doors to get people out to vote. You say, it's amazing. I've, I've never needed anybody to knock on my door to get me out to vote. I've always felt that I was due to bound to vote, but there are people who will call me the next day and say, I didn't vote because nobody ever came to my door. I mean, you heard them this morning. Here's a lady saying, I don't see any things on the poll. She knows that Evans is running for governor, but she doesn't see anything on the poll. They need to be reminded. And that's what getting out the vote means on Tuesday. So what happens? I'm, I'm change interested. Of change. Change of change. Yeah. Hold that thought, and we're going to let you go. Mm -hmm. Let's take them. Oh, yeah. I know. And I, it turns me off so badly, you know. Oh. You are who you vote. That's you exactly. Vote. I mean, you know, I mean, I... I <laughs> oh.
Okay, yeah, you were just explaining. So so I'm sitting in my house on election day, and what's, what's going to happen as far as, as keeping the volunteers coming in? These volunteers are going to come in, and they're going to cover every single polling place in the city. Uh, Fatah has to bring them in, or, or he'll have a large um, organization right here in the city. But because he's traveled around the country from state to state, it's what you call payback time now. Uh, they will come in to the city, and they will probably station themselves. It's customary to have at least two people on each polling place. Fatah is probably going to have two to four on each polling place because you'd be surprised how many people actually show up at the polling place not remembering or not caring or not knowing who it is they want to vote for. This is not a presidential election. There are a lot of people running for the governorship and people will get so confused that they don't know what they're saying or doing. And so it's necessary to have people on the polling place when they walk in to say, would you vote for so-and-so-and-so? -and, -so -and, -so? and that's what they do. But Tom started early. Uh, my polling place, uh, he was not a candidate last year. And he brought orange juice, donuts, and coffee for the people who work on the polls. Can I tell you how far orange juice, donuts, and coffee goes for a little old lady who from 6 o'clock in the morning, about 6.30, till past 9 o'clock at night, with the exception of a lunch break, sits on the polling place. I mean, they were just excited because here was a man who wasn't running. I've had several of them say to me, let me know now when he's running. Doesn't take much to get a vote. It's good politics. Very good po He's an absolute shrewd politician. He's a absolute... This, this, this young man, and I'm glad because we need him, and whether he wins this seat on Tuesday or not, he'll never be out of politics. He never stops working. He gave a college fair back in January and brought in national speakers, had over 1,000 young men and women in colleges all over the state of Pennsylvania, many of whom he was responsible for getting scholarships for, and did it from high school. They weren't able to vote then, but guess what? That was four years ago. They're now voters. Somebody running, he's running for Congress in the majority African-American district. Yes. Uh, if, he was running in a, if he was white and running in a majority white district, do you think he would be campaigning in a different way? Is there, is there a certain way that you campaign? Oh, sure. Black? Oh, sure. Politicians won't admit it, but they all campaign. Uh, for instance, there are politicians who will buy radio time on this station here at WHAT with one tone, and then will buy time on our all-new station, KYW, with another tone because they think that they're appealing to a different group of people. I respect Shaka Fatah for not doing that this time. He does have a similar commercial running on both stations. However, he does have some different ones, but you have to do that because if you put a well-known uh, African-American on another station, you will get African-Americans, but there may be other people who say, well, who is she? The same as if you put a well-known um, Caucasian on an African-American station. What about just generally, though, whites campaigning and white district blacks campaigning? I'm just trying to figure out, is there a difference if you're a black politician mm -hmm. or a white politician as to how you get out? Well, the, the, the way I can answer the difference in white politicians and black politicians, historically, black people have voted for white people no matter what. Uh, I have voted for so many white people, I couldn't spell their names, let alone pronounce it. Uh, that's why this gubernatorial race here in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania this year is so important because we have one and only one African-American who happens to be the most qualified. African-American people will support whites because someone said they're the best. Um, white people will not support an African-American because somebody said they're the best. And I have a lot of friends on both sides, and I've been told. I tried, but I just couldn't do it. White people will support whites first. The majority of them. Now, there are some exceptions. Black people, and the very evidence is we had one black mayor in this city in a hundred years, and now we're back to a white mayor, and black people were very significant in putting him in. So when you have that kind of a balance, uh, you have to say, yes, they do. We have, a, we have a section of this city called the Northeast, and all of the politicians, I am told, and I have been with some of them when they've gone there, Clinton included, have different speeches for the Northeast, which is primarily 
white, middle class, and, and Jewish than he'd have if he came here to 54th and City Line Avenue, where it's primarily um, African American. You were saying something uh, when we first walked in about um, just sort of about when, when a politician actually gains office, it's almost, when we were talking about Milton Schaaf and we were talking about other people, it seems as if the system kind of corrupts him. Over. Something happens. It does. Uh, I've been around, as you know, a little while, and I say they drink from a special fountain or they have special kind of a breakfast. I've known and I've seen in my career some extremely good people. Uh, go into politics. Oh, they may have remained good, but they there's something happens to them. I won't say they become corrupt, but they change. They become a different person. Uh, and I think it's because of the nature of the breed that where they serve. You become so hardened uh, because of what you have to go through. It may also be a uh, frustration because if you're a kind of person that's been getting the job done and you've, you've served on a local level, now you're playing with the big boys. So, you know, if you're playing with the big boys, you've got to stay on the porch unless you're going to do the job. And so you go into Washington or you go into Harrisburg where you have, instead of 18 people as elected officials, you have 180. And many of them have been there before you. And you think you're going to be, oh, boy, I'm going to do this for my district. And it takes you 10 years to get something done. They become very hard and they have to play ball. That's a good thing. That's a good word for it. They have to play ball, and heretofore they're not accustomed to that. But I've seen some good people change tremendously. In what ways? Not necessarily for the best. I, that's why you have a lot of resignations. You hear these politicians say, I'm leaving because I want to spend more time with my family. I'm leaving because I want to do this. I'm, they're leaving because they can't get anything done. And they may be ambitious and good, decent people who really went there thinking they could change. And you can't because you only got one vote. And so they leave because, now the ones that stay there, and I have a problem with politicians who are, I, hate, I don't like career politicians. I don't like people who stay in, in office until they die in office. And I, I think, I, I, don't, I don't particularly care about term limits because I think the voters can limit the terms. But I think that you ought to go and try to do a job. And if you believe you've hit a point where you can no longer get legislation through, you can no longer serve your people back home, get out, go back home, do the job that you, but most of these guys can't get jobs. A lot of these politicians wouldn't have a job if they weren't politicians, many of them. Yeah. Yeah, so what does that say about the system? Though? Well, it tells you that there's a whole lot of room for change, but as long as people need money to change it from voters, they can forget it because voters don't give money. It's your PAC groups, your corporations that give the money. If everybody was permitted to give $5 or less, we would have a lot more honest and honorable people doing their job in your capitals around the uh, uh, states and in the nation's capital. But when you have uh, PACs who can give large num uh, amounts of money in the congressional race, of course you can only give $1,000. But if everybody could give a dollar, or five dollars, something that everybody could afford and no corporations could give, you'd have more honorable and more honest people. And uh, the other thing is, too, they, the politicians don't get paid, in my opinion, at the right level. They're like school teachers and police officers. They don't get paid enough money. They really don't. The perks are there. But, I mean, who wants perks? They pay, pay a person a salary and let them pay their own bills. Yeah. Great. Okay. That's terrific. Thank you. <laughs> Off the hot seat. Yep. <laughs> yep. Can we just sit here for quietly for that about that 15 seconds? We just need a little bit of room time to. <laughs> well. Genius. Genius. Okay. Genius. Okay. Okay. Like, like I need a whole head. Yours, yours, everybody should live the way she lives, all right? Yeah, but I, I take you one in Section 8 yes. house. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, um, yeah, she take it all, right? Katanya, you, you know that Tribune supplement? Mm -hmm. we, need, we need that in here. Thank you. All right, Al. Tonight I came out and I was sweating and I, and I, I lost my voice. Yeah. 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 Like you have to go through them, but they're um, but they're they're not easy. They're not easy. And 
when you got somebody who's, who's, really, who's really trying, who's camping, it's it really not nice because you have to camp it hard. So if you don't want to campaign, don't get in this. Good morning and a very pleasant morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. It's time now to get our program started. This is Mornings with Mary. It is nine minutes past the hour of seven o'clock in Philadelphia. And we're delighted to have you join us this morning, Thursday, May 5th, 1994. Partly sunny today. This afternoon, we're going to have some clouds throughout the day, as a matter of fact. And we're looking forward to about 60 degrees. Tonight, it'll be cloudy with a 30% chance of some showers. After midnight, we're looking for a low of about 45 to 50. It's 54 degrees in Philadelphia this morning. We'll be here until about 9 o'clock this morning, an hour short. We'll be off to City Council for our live broadcast. And in the studio with us this morning, joining us live, live is the present congressman from the 2nd Congressional District. And, of course, it's Congressman Blackwell. Welcome. Good morning, Mary. Bright and early. Bright and early. Let's see if we got you on. Say that again. Good morning, We got gotcha. you. We got gotcha. you. <laughs> congressman, how you doing? Oh, fine. How Good to have you here. It's nice again, to be here. Again, as usual. It's nice to be here, man. Nice to have you with us. Congressman, you, of course, are mm -hmm. running for to retain your seat in the 2nd Congressional District, and all reports say that you're running the so-called battle of your life, your mm -hmm. political life is at stake, mm -hmm. and you're, it's a close race. What's your outlook on this thing? Mayor, Mayor I feel good uh, because of what you just said. Everybody says a close race, but, they, but they're not saying he's overtaking him. <laughs> See, if they, if they were saying, boy, he's overtaking him, I mean, I'm inspecting them to try to do that in a few days. But the fact is that we're running a good campaign, very good, positive campaign. I'm running off of, off of my record. And I'm confident that we are going to win. Uh, there's, there's no doubt, uh, doubt about it. And when you see an escalation in negative things, you know you're doing all right. L let's talk about some of the things that you may not hear about your campaign, and that is that Lou is all right, but the people around him are just no good. The people around him, now you know me, I'm going to lay it out there. Uh, the people around him, uh, do, do you hear this? Well, Mary, I, I, you, you saw me this morning with, with one of the top attorneys, young attorneys in the city, uh, Jennifer St. Hill. Are they saying that she's no good? Whenever you run a campaign and you have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, some are going to be uh, uh, good and some are going to be bad. But I have a decent staff. And, and Mary, that's, that's the rumors that you get because people are trying to demean you and, and, and to criticize your, uh, your uh, organization when they, when they know they're, they're losing. Mary, I have a good staff. I remember one time, Mary, I went to your, uh, I went to a, on a call to a, uh, I went to a meeting at you, at where, where you live, and you said to me something about watch these people that you bring in here because you might not get any votes. I said, Mary, these are the people who are going to, to, to support me. These are the people who are, going, who are going to send me to Washington. And so I am not going to apologize for the people that I have around me. I call them Gideon's Army. They're not all professionals. They're, they're, they're ordinary people, man. You know, God uses ordinary people to do his work, and I have some good people, and I'm going to stay with them. And you feel comfortable I that feel these comfortable, are the people Mary. that you want to keep And the people who are criticizing Mary, let them keep on criticizing, and, and, and I want to see what, what they're going to do after Tuesday night. One of the things that we often get asked here on this program is, why doesn't Congressman Blackwell have additional offices throughout the city of Philadelphia? I guess maybe people got a little spoiled with your predecessor. Yeah. Well, why don't you have other offices? Well, first, I do have another office. I have a, a, another office at Dave Richardson's office in Germantown. We are sharing an office now. Is that legal? It, absolutely, it's legal. In fact, we checked it with the federal government. I'm paying for my, I have, I have my section, he has his. The fact is that Dave Richardson held up the, uh, the other office that I have in that section because he wanted it on the corner of, of Germantown and Shelton. He wanted it on the third floor. There, the egress and ingress was, was, was just, just, just wasn't there for, for handicapped people, for elderly people. I could not, uh, 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 the, the government would, would not allow me to, to, uh, to, give, uh, to uh, put in an elevator or to fix the elevator that they had. And so Dave Richardson wanted a one-stop one, a one uh, office where we have Allison Schwartz, myself, he and the, uh, and the legislator. Dave Richardson kept, kept holding me up. I kept telling Dave, Dave, I cannot go into that place. The federal government will, will, will not okay it. Just recently, we worked it out. But let me say this. The, when I took office, Mary, the, the legislative office or the congressional office was a little hole in the wall, a little small office on 52nd Street uh, next door to a place that wasn't too nice. I now have one of the, I think, one of the best, probably one of the best offices in the country in terms of the congressional office. This, I, I, this is in West Philly. The one at, 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 at 3901 Market Street in the Senior Citizens Building. We have a modern, up-to-date office where we have ramps for handicapped people to come in. We have the subway where people can come. And Con I think, Congressman, yeah. you're right. There's sure, no question sure, about sure. that. But we're talking about Germantown. I'm saying, but I have one now. Okay. I have one now, now, what's the phone number up there? Phone number. Well, in, call in, 387. 
call 387-2543 and they'll give you the number. It's rare that I call it. Oh, okay, okay. Well, so I, I want to be clear on this. Yeah. Uh, you have an office in Germantown, absolutely. and it is in the same offices where Dave Richardson's, Dave Richardson's office is. Okay. And I'll tell you what we did before that. Before that, Mary, we had office space in the libraries up there because we wanted to do something just so people could meet with us, but we were trying to work out with Davis with Dave where we would have a permanent office. Uh, that, that's, that's a big itch, itch on this program. Because, and, I, and again, I, I think maybe perhaps because your predecessor had these offices around the city. If you're reelected to your seat, are you going to have an office, any additional ones? Mary, is that a possibility? Mary, we, have, we only have so much money allotted to us for office space. We have one in the Germantown area now. We have one in West Philadelphia. I, I, I cannot uh, open up an office in every area, area of the city. The, 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 the criticisms that, that I get sometimes are, are legitimate from people who have to come far, but, that, but, but some of it is just election talking, that's all. No, no, I'm, uh, you know, no, this, this ain't no, election talk. I don't mean you. I don't mean this you. ain't election yeah. talk. I'm, talk. I'm sure. going back over the year, sure. two years that you've been in, and I want to be able to say to people when they call me and complain that Congressman Blackwell has an office in West Philly and I live in so and so and so and so, I want to be able to give them these numbers, and that's why I asked right, that question. Right. Mary, when, when you, when you, when any any a, a, a elected official get gets you elected, you, you're never going to, more especially when you're a congressional person, you're never going to get all the money you need to do what you want to do. But well, we try to be a, as accessible as possible. Is it possible that because Congressman Gray had such a high level office that he got more money allocated to no, him? No, no, we all get the same money, same and, and 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 my office, my office, my the office space that I have now. I, I could fit four of Bill Gray's offices into my office. I, I visited his, his office space uh, when I became the congressman, and he did not have anywhere near the type of setup that I have in West Philadelphia. Congressman, and tell, I say that respectfully. tell the people uh, why they should send you back to Congress. Because, Mary, because of, uh, of the record that, that I have. Mary, I have, uh, uh, since I've been there, Mary, most of your uh, important uh, uh, agencies, uh, including, including labor, including... Uh, education, including uh, civil rights organizations, including health associations, including, including senior citizens organizations, including uh, human rights organizations, and now the, the, uh, the, the, uh, I've got the, the dub rating for peace, 100%. Uh, uh, All these people said that Lucian Black well, acts right and votes right. In addition to which, I become vice chair of the Economic Development Committee through my, 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 my rise in seniority because Seven, uh, 111 people uh, left uh, the, the, the Congress the last time. Also, Mary, uh, you know, I, I haven't done everything in these two years. I, I've only been there two years, but I saved the, the uh, LAHI program. Uh, that was cut by $720 million. I'm, I'm the only African-American on the Budget Committee, and we brought that to the attention of the, of, of the Budget Committee and debated that. I saved that. Let's, let's say that again. Is that the, the committee that uh, Congressman Gray was on? Yes, he was on the Budget Committee. And you're the only African-American? I'm the only Af African-American on, on the committee, and, and, and I, I have the right to serve there for a six-year term. We saved uh, uh, $200 uh, 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 million dollars in rapid uh, 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 transit funds when they wanted to cut 25% of the transit funds here in this area. We saved that by telling them on the committee that if we did that, the, the people we'd have to raise the fares of people who use the buses and things in, in this in this in this city. Uh, we have we have uh, helped to cut the, the defense budget. Uh, we ha we saved the whole program at 109 million dollars, where we where 46 million of it came to came to uh, will we'll be coming to uh, to Philadelphia. I understand that they will uh, they will rehabilitate Richard Allen Home. So we have I'm running off, off of my record. I believe I have a good record now. And when you have a good record, I, I, I'm not, it's not a perfect record, but a, a good record. Some would call it excellent, and I think that I should be reelected. Uh, Congressman, how important are endorsements? We've heard a lot these last few weeks about endorsements, whether they came from ministers or newspapers or community leaders. How much importance do you put in endorsements? I think, uh, I think every politician likes to get endorsed by everybody. Unfortunately, you do, do not. The only uh, the only uh, criticism that I would have, uh, uh, when people have, have never supported you and they, and they do not support you now, when they make a big deal out of it, that's being hypocritical. Uh, uh, I, I think that people have a right to support who they want to support. Uh, I, I have uh, so, uh, some major newspapers in this town that, that, that didn't support me for mayor, didn't support me for, for uh, Congress, uh, have always advocated someone else, and they have every right to do that. And they're doing that now, but I won. So, uh, while I would, delight, I, would, I would like to have endorsements, uh, 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 I'm going to stay and do what, what I've been doing. I won before without them, and, and I would do it. And I, and, and I have some major endorsements. Uh, we have, uh, I understand they have a group of ministers 
who are going to endorse me on Friday. And I'll tell you what I told them, man. When I spoke before the ministers group, I said, listen, I do not want a public endorsement from the ministers. Because I do not want people to think that the church is divided. I don't think it's right. And they said to me, and, and you know, and they, I guess they just overruled me and, and said, well, we, 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 we're going to do it because there's been a, uh, a, a, there's a perception that, uh, that I do not have uh, any, any support from the ministers. I, I, I have support from labor. I have support from many, many groups. The fact is that that the only su real support, Mary, is if it shows up on election day. We'll take a break shows on that, too. We're going to take a new, we're gonna take a traffic report from Anthony. We'll be back. We're talking to United States Senator Marty and I. And I'm like you. Biden. I don't have to but support so far, the candidate because I'm at the party. Right. Right. You know, I mean, I'm in the news business. But I went because Marty asked me to come. I'll tell you something. You know what the Democrats did the other night? You remember the Democrats? You know, single was dead Did you know that? You see, you only probably. Thank you, Anthony. We'll be right back. You probably didn't notice it because you ain't no drinker, see. But let me tell you something. This man, Lou, was dead drunk. <laughs> Hope you ain't got that camera rolling. <laughs> I can't believe somebody walked up to me and told me that. I couldn't believe it. So... I yeah, haven't seen. I'm Reggie White. I haven't seen the two Philadelphia Eagles. If now you think she's going to pull up? Well, you know, if, if, you know if this other one had been Philadelphia. in uh, Kathy no. she'd be leading now. It's because yeah. I care about this. She's probably leading. Well, because Kathy doesn't seem to be moving. Is that because we're in this end of the country? No, no I, just, I just don't think she's moving. I think, I, I, I often said that uh, I'm supporting Dwight, you know that. Of course, but, I'm but I, I mean, too. But I, I've, I've often said that the, 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 the one person that they got to watch is Lynn Yeah, because she's still got that name recognition. She almost beat Spectre. The only reason for not being Spectre is that she that she made some mistakes early on in the campaign. Yeah, she made some bad But toward the end, she But you know, it's it's sad because I I tell I tell this to to Len Yako. Uh, so I don't know the lady. I really think you I've never to um, I've never had an opportunity to. Uh, you got to gotta turn them this, those off. Yeah, this all off the record. Uh, I think you'll find that Jack's healthcare has several uh, advantages. Uh, I've never had an opportunity yeah. to. Look, Jack, you know, in thirty some years in this business, and I never heard the name Len Yako surface. Until she ran, something's wrong. And she and I had a long talk, and I explained that to her. I said, Lynn, uh, she says, you don't like me. I said, Lynn, I don't know you. I, I, you know, I gotta, you have to get to know people. I said, I've been knowing Lou Blackwell 20 some years. I've been knowing Dwight 15 years. Um, I don't know Lynn Yako. And then she said, well, I was with Women's Way. I said, well, you gotta understand, Women's Way was not, you know, down there with the people. I mean, <laughs> I'm down there with the people. So um, I told her, I said, no, I. I I didn't like you riding on the with four degrees and our guest in the studio is Congressman Lou Blackwell. We'll be taking your telephone calls in just a moment at 581-5186, 581-5186. You know, we all have bills. Yes, we do. And most of us do our best to pay them. Paying bills is a personal responsibility that should not be taken lightly. The consequences can be devastating. You risk getting a bad credit rating, which certainly could affect your credit purchases. Your property could be subject to liens. By not paying your PGW bill, you risk your gas service being cut off. You could end up spending even more money on gas. Well, let's talk a little bit about um, the um, three strikes and out bill. I don't, I don't know. Did you vote for that bill well, or did you not? What, let me tell you what I did, Mary. I voted against three strikes you're out. I voted against the death penalty. I voted against prosecuting children as adults. I voted against the truth in sentencing, which required receiving uh, 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 required the states receiving federal funds to abolish the parole. I, 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 I voted against, uh, against the, the bill that would not give Pell Grants for, for education for prisoners. And I voted against the habeas corpus limits, which said that a prisoner couldn't couldn't uh, couldn't appeal his uh, his uh, sentence. I voted against all the negative things that we have in the crime bill. We were voted down overwhelmingly. There are 700 billion positive funds in the crime bill for positive program anti-crime uh, 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 programs. I voted for, for, for that reason. I voted for the crime bill, and some of, and some of the other uh, uh, congressional black caucus members did too. I want to make sure I get my fair share to stop uh, gang members from fighting in the streets. My fair share to, to stop the uh, 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 women from being. Uh, 
uh, views of my, my fair share of, of the recreational and health funds and, and educational funds that, that come in that money. And so I, after I voted against all these other things, then I voted for the crime bill because I want some of that positive money. Wait, now I want to go back. You said you voted, you voted against I voted the against street. I only want to talk about three strikes yeah, and out. Yeah. Because there was a statement made that you voted in favor of that bill. Mary, Mary, I voted against the three, the three strikes and out. See, when you when you bring up a bill in the Congress, and a lot of people who haven't been in the Congress don't know how it works, and that's why they make mistakes about Star, Star Wars and other things. You vote on various elements of the bill. There are amendments to the bill. In other words, three strikes you out, someone will in introduce an amendment to take that out. I voted to take that out because I think it's unfair. We don't know what it means. We, we don't know whether it will, it, it, it means that a person steals, a, steals three televisions and he's in jail for life or someone kills somebody. So we voted against that. Well, well, well while we're doing this, then let's, talk, let's tell the people then uh, about your defense budget votes. How did you my vote? My defense in budget, Mary, I, I, I have been so positive on my defense budget votes that an organization called called Peace Prospects in 103rd Congress rated me 100. I'm, I'm rated a dove, a dove in the Congress, which means I'm against war, I'm against, I'm against the defense budget. And I might add that I have the highest rating of any congressman uh, in the in the state of Pennsylvania, I, I was rated 100. Uh, my colleague uh, Tom Folletta was rated 96, and my other colleague Tom uh, Borsky from Philadelphia was rated 51. And so I'm an anti-defense uh, 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 budget person. I've spoken against it. I voted against it. I worked with Congressman Dellum, who is probably one of the most competent uh, chairman of, 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 of the Armed Service Committee that we have that we've ever had, and I will continue to do that. Congressman, this morning, uh, rather yesterday late, Randall Robinson, the uh, executive director of Trans Africa, was taken to the hospital. He's on his 23rd day of a hunger strike. This morning, President Clinton said it has now come to his attention. What do you think that's going to mean? Well, first, it, it, uh, we talked about that yesterday. I talked to... Uh, uh, Is this in Washington? Yes, in Washington. I talked to Congressman Owens, Major Owens. Uh, he said that uh, he's, he's, he's dehydrated. He said, and even though, even though uh, it's more something, 435. 435. Uh, is it in the majority Democrat or Republican? Well, Mary, well, there's no such thing as, as a Demi Democrat and, and, and Republicans anymore. What we have is conservatives and, and then the rest But of I, I know, but they yeah. were sent yeah. there. But they they no, were voted yeah. Democrats or Republicans. Now, I'll tell you what I think happened. I think you have people who, who ran as Democrats, but their philosophy is not Democrat. I know, and okay, I hear Congress, all of that, yeah. but I'm saying, is there any idea whether there are more Republicans? No, you have more, you have more, re you have more people elected Democrats elected. Than, than you have. No matter what they change after they but get. But if you, but they have. What, but, what about President Clinton? Uh, are you got a man who, who could die, who is certainly going to be um, scarred for life. Is there any such thing as the um, Black Congressional Caucus having a meeting? I, I wanted to ask Infumo this on Saturday. Do they ever meet with the President of the United States? Absolutely. Uh, they, they, they meet me with him quite often. And, What's and the last this, time this they met that you know of? I think last week they met with him. I was not there. Mm -hmm. uh, fact is that uh, uh, there was a demonstration in, in front of the White yes, House. Yes, I remember. Uh, I had to come back to Philadelphia, unfortunately. Uh, but the fact is that uh, we meet with him uh, uh, periodically on, on a lot of issues, and Haiti has been one of the most important issues. The fact is that he has... Uh, rating President Clinton. Now, you've been pretty close to the Clinton administration. Not as uh, loyal to a party as they used to And they've been here before. You went to Russia, mm -hmm. and when you went to Russia, uh, you came back and you spoke with us on this microphone. You're very jubilant about bringing those ships here. What's the status of that thing now? Well, right now, they're, they're, they're conducting a study, a feasibility study, to see if it, when we left Russia, we were not under any illusions that it was going to happen just, just like that. Also, there was a question of whether or not we're going to might Congressman, um, let's come back home a little bit to the election on Tuesday. If you lose this election, what do you plan to do? Well, first place, I don't, I don't expect to lose it. I, I'm not going to even talk about losing I, 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 I'm going to win. I know I'm going to win. Uh, you know, uh, I, I guess I'm the only person who has a good record. And I said the other day, you know, meaning that where you there's other criteria. You know, if anybody else had the record that I had in the Congress, no one, no one would dare uh, run, a, run against uh, he or she. The fact is that Lucian Blackwell always has to uh, defend what, what he does. Why is that? Well, I don't know. I don't know. And Mary, you know something? When I would do good, Scripture says evil is always around. So I accept that. I accept that. We're going to win. I'm not even thinking about any other job but continuing my job in the Congress. And, 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 and I'll be proven, proven right on Tuesday. We talked about this uh, yesterday on our program with our guest, Ward Leaders. Uh, uh, do you have Ward Leaders? You are a Ward Leader. Mary. Well, yes. Let me finish the question. Yes. You're a ward leader. Yes. Yes. 
and you have enjoyed a tremendous relationship over the years that you have been in public office when we're going back some 20 as a war leader. Do you have the significant, I know you have the party support, do you have the significant number of war leaders that you want? And if so or not, how important is Mary, it? Mary, the, the war leaders endorsed me in December. I have gone around to every ward in the district, including one where, where a certain person is trying to undermine me. I, I don't have to give you the name because you know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, you know, yeah, uh, uh, fact is that that the, all the all the wards have all the all the, all the wards all the wards have have reaffirmed uh, their their their. Uh, their uh, I haven't gone to one ward, not one ward, where they've said we're not going to support you anymore. What what we have going now is psychological warfare. They teach you about that in the army. See, I'm an old war veteran. I'm a Korean war veteran, and they have well, psych around the end they have psychological warfare. Well, they're supporting him, but they're afraid to say it. Mary, who would be afraid to tell me? I don't, I don't think we have any war leader or commitment out there with that, that would be afraid to tell me that they're not going to, to, to support me. I'm not the boogeyman, but they want to make people think, you know, if I want some money from you to do something, I have to borrow it. I want to borrow for two people. I go to you and say, Mary, uh, Lou, uh, uh, John Street just let me have $200,000. Then I go to John Street and say, Mary, just let me have $200,000. So I get it from both of you. So you, so you create an illusion. And what they're trying to do is create an illusion that, that the Woodies are, are not with me. They are with me. I have many elected officials with me. I have labor with me. And Mary, I have ordinary people with me. Even in Washington, uh, the, some of the press was told, Lucian Blackwell has no grassroots support. Mary, some people have, have, uh, have, 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 have referred to me as the champion of, of, of poor people. And yet in Washington, they think I have no grassroots support, which is just utterly ridiculous. The other day, in an endorsement of, uh, of, 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 of my opponent, one of the papers said that Blackwell's problem is he cares too much about the poor, you know, he feeds the poor. But Mary, I'm so proud of that, I don't know what to do. And if anybody ever thinks that they're gonna threaten me into not, not, not standing up for the poor and seeing that they get justice of those in need, well, they just do not know Lucian Blackwell. Let's talk a little bit about raising money. You yeah. have been an effective uh, campaign money raiser. Uh, Mayor Edwin Dell told me last Saturday at the event that we hosted for you that he himself had raised and given to you $65,000. No, well, no. that's what he told me. Well, I'm telling I wrote you, it well, down. I'm, well, I'm telling you that, that, that he did not. He did not? I'm has the mayor publicly, raised any money for he has, you? He has helped me raise some money. Yes, but not $65,000? No, no, anywhere near that? Nowhere near $65,000. Why would he tell me that? Well, I think maybe oh, sometimes. No, he didn't just tell me. Well, there think, was a number I, of us I together. I think sometimes they're bragging, Mary. Oh, okay. They're bragging. But let me say this to you, Mary. You know, the last election, my opponent spent three hundred thousand dollars. I spent, I spent in ninety-one. I spent eighty thousand uh, dollars. When C. Lois Tucker ran for ran for uh, uh, against me, she she spent three hundred thousand dollars. I spent half of that. She spent three hundred thousand. She spent three hundred thousand dollars. I have never, Mary. Let me let me say this to you. I have never had to spend a lot of money to 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 get elected. And I think that the fact that uh, uh, my opponent says he outraised me two to one, which which I, and probably did. The fact is that I, you know, money does not get get you elected and if a person has to have money to do it then it means he doesn't deserve to, to get reelected. You know I'm, I'm glad right, to hear you say that. I'm glad to hear you say that because your, your campaign manager, your campaign manager, and I want to go on record, Jim Davis has, has just made me sick it, it, to my stomach telling me about how important it is that you all have so much more money than your opponent. That was one of the sore spots, and I want to get it out on this microphone right now in front of you. I told him, I said, I don't even know what you're talking about. And I'm glad to hear you say that, Congressman, that money is not the key factor in your getting elected and it never has been. Well, well, let me say this, Mary, because people do make a thing out of money. You got, you got people who raise millions of dollars to get elected. I have never come near to raising that kind of money. You're going to see they're going to do it, do it around the country. But the fact is that on election day, you need uh, you need to pay your workers. You need to pay some. In fact, uh, two members of you your staff to, you did it to me. One of them's with you, you now pay, out there today. Mary, you have to pay your people. Just well, Mary, let it. me say this to you. You know, I, but it's you know, new, you you know, know what if, bothers if, me? Uh, I know what a good, creditable person you uh, are, and I get sick and tired of some people who work for you coming up to my face saying things that they wouldn't dare say to you. And damn it, I want to get it out while they're sitting here. Well, Go right Mary, ahead. Well, I, but I wish you would tell me uh, at other times so I could well, stick it out. Well, uh, you, uh, you know, I try to tell you, morning. but you, you're busy, man. I'm trying to be very positive this morning, We're going to be positive, but I'm very, glad to hear I got, you I say got a that. Very, uh, listen, man, I came here with a very positive I, and attitude. I appreciate it, and I appreciate I'm, it. I am running for re-election, not my staff. And, Mary, I have a large, huge group of people working for me, and there are times when people might say something in their zeal to help me, and they, and they get overzealous. And that's, that's human nature, you know, to not... Scripture tells me there's none perfect but the Father, Mary. And some people are going in their zeal to help Lucian Blackwell, just like we have in other camps. 
they're going to make mistakes. I don't get the, I don't get upset about ordinary people saying things. Mary, I run my campaign. I make my decisions. I stand by. I stand by what I do. And if my staff will make make mistakes, I stand by that too. What would you like to say uh, before we go to the phone? By the way, five eight one five one eight six is our contact number. If you'd like to talk to Congressman Lou Blackwell, he's in our studios this morning at five eight one five one eight six. What would you like to tell the people? There's supposed to be an undecided block out there. First mm -hmm. of all, do you believe there is a large undecided block? And if so, what would you? What, what can we tell them to convince them, uh, Mr. Blackwell, one way or the other? Mary, I'm not trying to convince anybody right now. I'm running off, off of my record, Mary, and I'm not. I have, I'm not running negative negative commercials. I'm running positive commercials. No, I got to compliment you. Um, the running, campaign has and, taken the and high road. What that means, Mary, it means that I'm confident I'm going to win. When you see candidates at the end start to throw mud, it means that they're behind. I'm confident that just as I got elected in 91 and 92, I'm going to be elected now, and so I'm not concerned about the, uh, who's on the side. Sometimes people will tell you they're on the side because some people, when you call in and ask them, who, if the election was held today, who would you vote for? People just won't tell you. They'll say, I'm on the side because they figure that's my business. Some people feel you might be able to look through the phone and see who they are. <laughs> You're so, right. so I'm confident. I'm confident that uh, we are right, man. As you move through the city, sure. you, you see the that kind of uh, atmosphere. Well, I tell you what, walk with walk with me. Uh, uh, I've never been invited to walk, walk, walk with, with walk you. Walk with me tomorrow. Hey. I tell you what, walk <laughs> with me tomorrow. I invite you, and I'll we show you something. You, you'll be pleasantly surprised. We're talking to Congressman Lou Blackwell. We're going to take a break and come back. 581-5186. Oh, Lou Blackwell, you're a card. <laughs> no, I got to give both of y'all credit. This 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 campaign has been on the high road because a lot of people was looking for a lot of dirt. But I said you can't you can't look for something that's not there. You know, has it it hasn't surfaced on the air. Yeah. After the election, uh -huh. I want to talk about a lot of things, Mary. There's a lot of things that need to be said, and I want to say it to a group of people that, you know, uh, and, uh, Do you have to go right back to Congressman on Wednesday? Oh, yes, yes. In fact, see, you see, once again, we have, uh, we have the, uh, 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 primaries on different days. So yeah, so everybody has to shoot right back at you. Now, now, on our day next Tuesday, do, do we have any other, I know the one in Houston, in Texas is over, right? Uh, Congressman Lou Blackwell. Congressman, um, after the election, win, lose, or draw, and I know you say you're winning, uh, are you, will you sit down and talk with your opponent? Oh, absolutely, Mary. I, I think because I had, I had asked you that before. I had your mic off. I'm yeah, sorry. I have no problem, uh, You need Mary. to say that again. Yes, yes. I, I, I would sit down and talk to my opponent. In fact, I, I want to talk to a lot of people in this town. There's some things that need, that needs to be said about the philosophy of our community regarding uh, uh, what we do and how we see things and how we do things, Mary. This, uh, and I, I want to say it in a very positive way. I'm at that point in my life where I want to heal the wounds that, we, that we've created over the years. We have a lot of people who, uh, uh, who continue the type, who want to continue the type of things that have affected our community over the years. I, I don't want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of with doing very positive things with, the, with uh, my life because I have experience, I have uh, a, a lot more knowledge and a lot of people about some things going on in, in, in this country, not only in this city. And I want to give that, I want to give that experience to, uh, to, to some people I think it needed. Okay, let's go to our telephones. West Philadelphia, you're on WHAT, and we're talking with Congressman Lou Blackwell. Good morning. Good morning, Mary Congress Blackwell and listeners and co-producers. I wanted to ask, does seniority make a difference in the Congress? Oh, absolutely. It makes a, it makes a, it makes a, a, a huge difference. Uh, in fact, I'm an, I... Very good question. Uh, uh, well, people say now that I have it doesn't mean anything. Before I had it, they said, "Wait, well, he can't. Uh, well, he, he's he, at his age, he'll never get any seniority." Well, the Lord uh, gave him another miracle. He sent 111 people away, and I rose uh, uh, up 111 spots. I'm now vice chair of the Economic Development Committee. And then I understand you might have 60 more to leave in this election, and so I, I'll probably become a, a, a subcommittee chairman in just in just three short years. Uh, the chairman of the various committees actually run the Congress, and you get things done through the chairman. If you're a chairman, and then you have some leverage in terms of how you deal with other people. So the chairmanships of the Congress are very, very, very important. The senior is very, very, very important. When you come in, you start at the bottom of the heap. Good morning. You're on WHAT, West Philadelphia. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, sir. And to you, 
Congressman. Good morning, sir. Oh. You, you forgot to say good morning to me. Well, no, sir. I tried not. <laughs> okay, we're going to make it the, make a little time here. Go ahead, Ken. So be it. Uh, my understanding is that there was a jobs bill that was set into motion last year that was defeated yeah, in the Congress and in the Senate. I was wondering if this sort of jobs bill, uh, my understanding is that three of them were placed forth as of about January of this year. If there has been right. any Do movement and if your office will be supporting that federal jobs Which bill that's coming up. And thank you very much. Thank you. Well, first, I have a jobs bill myself that I introduced. Uh, 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 and I believe that no. any jobs bill that comes up that will put people to work, uh, I will support it. I also have a fair trade agreement that says that when a country does uh, business with, with the United States, such as, as uh, uh, China or, or Japan or Korea or, or Russia, that we be allowed to uh, also sell in their country. We have unfair trade agreement with uh, most of the countries around the world. We have a 60, $160 billion trade deficit and going up, which means everything's coming to America, nothing's going back. That's why we have high unemployment and we're fighting that. So yes, I would support that. Central City, good morning. Well, good morning, Mary. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Congressman. Good morning. How are you, Leon? Hey, I'm one of those undecided voters. I'm just totally confused about your uh, vote on the crime bill. Mm -hmm. I'm referring to the House uh, Bill 4092, passed by the House on April the 21st. Did you vote? Yes, what I did, uh, Leon, I voted against, uh, against three strikes you out. I voted against the death penalty. I voted against prosecuting children as adults. I voted against truth in sentencing. I voted against... Uh, uh, not allowing uh, uh, appeal grants for, for prisoners and, and habeas corpus limits. I'll stop you for a minute. Tom. Yes, go right ahead. Did you vote in favor of this bill or not? I, I have to explain why I voted in favor of the bill. I voted against the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the negative requirements of the bill, but we were, we were outvoted overwhelmingly. We then voted because, because there's 700 billion anti-crime uh, anti prevention monies in, in, in the bill. I voted for it so that, that we could get our fair share here in Philadelphia. But, but your vote in favor of the bill means that the, the three strikes and your out provision passed. No, no, the three strikes and your out position, uh, 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 provision passed before I voted for the bill. I voted against that. We were outvoted 300 to, th three to one. But three to one. When you voted for the bill itself, the three strikes and your out provision is contained in that bill you voted in favor of. What? But no, I voted against the three strikes you're out, but the, and the final. Uh, uh, and the final uh, 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 bill, the provision was in because it was voted in. But I was not going to vote against the seven billion dollars that we that's now placed in there for for uh, uh, very positive programs. Well, now y'all got me confused. Well, now, Mary, that's, that, that's why you can't debate legislation on. No, no, but we don't have to debate. But we've sure. got to get this clear. Too sure. many people have asked me on this program, and I said, wait till a congressman gets here, and I need to know. Did you vote yes or no on three strikes or you're out? I voted no on three strikes or out. What are you trying to say, sir? Uh, the bill that uh, the congressman voted yes on, Bill 4092, does contain a three strikes or you're out provision. You're absolutely right, Leon, but I voted no. When it came to the floor, it's on record, I voted no on three strikes or you're out. That was inserted in the bill because I was outvoted. I, I, I cannot stop that. I also voted no on the death penalty. And I'll tell you why. Wait, wait let's don't move to another. Ahead, let's don't move to another. Well, I want to say you, 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 you have to understand the philosophy of the bill, Mary. You understand what I did. Okay. We had the death penalty. I voted against the death penalty because Corrine Sykes, a black woman in Philadelphia, uh, some time ago, I, I was a little boy. She was put to death, and after she was put to death, they found uh, out that she was innocent. Black boy, you were a little boy. Oh, how? how so yeah. Neither one. Of <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't. I wasn't. You were a little, you I, were I, I was, little boy. I was very young. Yes, I was very young. <laughs> The point is that oh, she boy. was she was put to death. <laughs> she was put to death, yeah, I remember and we that. found out that, that she was innocent. I voted against that, but 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 the death penalty passed overwhelmingly. I voted against prosecuting young children as adults. It passed overwhelmingly. But in the overall, after that passed and started in the bill, there are good aspects of the bill, such as protecting women, uh, uh, stopping uh, a juvenile crime. Okay, my traffic uh, is good. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, did you get to clear? Are you clear there, sir? I had a question for Haiti. Can I hold Mary? Yeah, you can hold on. Thank you. Franklin and Walt Whitman Bridges. Hungry and in a hurry? Try Edmonds' convenient single-size snacks, all butter pound cake, apple pie, even a fat-free chocolate crunch cake from Edmonds at your favorite That's convenience store. Thing. That's Metro Traffic. Oh, you really try to help me, don't you? Thank you. I appreciate that, Anthony. If you get medical assistance, you can certainly choose 2800 Mercy Health Plan doctors. These are just some of the reasons why over 100,000 of your Philadelphia neighbors have joined Mercy Health Plan, and more people are joining every day. 
shouldn't you think about it too? If you want more information, call 1-800-521-6867. That's 1-800-521-6867. Talk to a Mercy Health Plan representative. Yield for one second, please. Leon, the bill, the, the $7 billion uh, appropriation for community programs to prevent crime, it was a, a billion and a half for model programs in high crime areas, areas a billion point three for ounce prevention programs, a 1.4 billion for drug courts, 2 billion for education and substance abuse programs, 525 million for grants providing employment opportunities for young adults in high crime and unemployment areas called the YES program, 100 million for programs to reduce gang act activities and, and the use of illegal drugs by juveniles, 10 million for midnight sports leagues for young adults because they say crimes are, are committed between midnight and, and 8 o'clock and so that, that way they would have mi midnight sports for youngsters who want to uh, to uh, 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 play a ball instead of doing that, and we have we had six million to recruit and train police officers in high crime areas, and to and seven million to prevent crime against old, older citizens. They have money in there for curbing violence against uh, against women. Uh, they have prison and boot camps for youngsters. Instead of putting them in jail, they send them to boot camp and train them. Uh, weekend incarceration and community service programs that deals with uh, substance abuse and uh, and crime and crime. Quick question. Hang on. Sure, sure. Why are you? Uh, black legislators let Clinton get away with this far uh, and discriminatory Haitian policy. He got most, a lot of his black folks because he said he was going to back away from Bush's policy of turning these ships around the water. Uh, yet he's doing the same thing. They sent the Colombians who almost starved it. Before, for 200. There is a great deal of change in the city charter. Changing the city charter gives too much power to the mayor. Vote no on the charter change question. We must also reject those candidates who want to destroy the right to elect judges. Too many black people have died for the right to vote to just give it away. When politicians said law and order, it meant brutality and injustice for and Fogarty for Congress because they want to fill more schools, not more jails. That's right, Henry. I hope the voters listen because they need Fatah and Fogarty in Congress paid for by the Bowser Weaver and Casada's Political Action Committee. Imagine this. You have cancer. You need to make a rational decision about treatment. Yeah, we're going to take a few more minutes on this side of the hour with Congressman Lou Blackwell. Congressman, the charter change. Did you, prior to whatever has happened now, how did you Absolutely. go on that? I, I, I've been telling people around the city that, that I'm against it. You have? I've been saying that they should put it off because there are a lot of questions. With the last charter change we got was in 1950. All this talk about it's a power grab, and I, I could, I, from what I sense from it, there are a lot of people didn't quite read it well enough to understand it. And yes, I told you this, <laughs> I tell you this every time I see you, but I, I don't think I've ever said it publicly. You spoil people. Uh, all the time that you were in council, uh, people were able to come get you, come to you. And I, I'm, I try to convince people that. As, as Bill Gray had to try to convince people, you were elected to serve in Washington. Mm -hmm. You're just simply not going to be mm -hmm. here to hold our hands mm -hmm. every single day. How are you going to handle that? Because people still look for you to do what you did when you were in council. Gray, as I travel around the city, I tell people this. I was elected to be in, in Congress. I come home probably more than any congressman that you've had. Fact is that you have to get in, no matter who's there, you have to get into a congressional environment, learn your work and do your work. No way you can come home at night, get home at 9 o'clock, uh, go get up at, at, uh, at, uh, at 6 o'clock in the morning. For, I get up at 4, really, and, and leave at 6 to get back down at 8. Because then you get down at 8, you got a, a meeting at 8, you got to rush to, to the meeting, you got to get your thoughts together. There are things that they do at night that will allow you to learn how to do your job better. And so if you're going to elect any congressman, he's going to have to be out of town. As I explained that to people, they accept it. The fact is that they're... That, that, that sometimes you just have to start to explain what the, the philosophy of your job, and most people are decent enough to understand it. The only people who don't understand it are people who do not want to understand it. And most people who question it are not just against you. They just want to know what's going on. I think I have an, obliga uh, an obligation to tell them. Winfield, David, good morning. Uh, good morning, Mary, and good morning. We're running out of time with the congressman, yeah. so we're going to ask you to ask one question, each person, if you want to get on the air. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Congressman, yesterday's Daily News has for time in front of you about uh, percentages. Is there any uh, merit to the... No. Thank you. Well, the first, the Daily News didn't have them. They were reporting some independent outfit out of uh, 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 Harrisburg 
who said they, they did a poll. When they were asked, well, what are the demographics? Uh, what would age groups, the gender, the, the uh, race? They said that we, we, we can't give you that information. When we said, well, who paid for the poll? They said that they couldn't give us that. When we asked them what was the margin of error, they said five, five uh, points plus on both sides. So that means that it's about 11 point margin of error. Any, uh, any legitimate uh, poster will tell you that it was not a legitimate poll. And so uh, we, 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 they tried that in the last election. Larry Holland came out with a poll in the end and said that he had overtaken me. And it, in fact, my good friend Mary Mason had called me and said, Lou, what about this poll? I said, Mary, if that poll is legitimate and Larry Holland beats me, I'll take the next plane to Russia. And I guess if that poll was right, I'll take the, I'll, I'll take the next train, I'll, I'll take the ne next plane to Beijing, China, okay? <laughs> but wait a minute, Congressman. That's the, same, that's the same polling company that polled you when you ran before, no. wait, let me finish, okay. that when you ran with Dolores Tucker and uh, uh, John White and your present opponent, Shaka Not true. Fatah. Not true. That is, isn't that the same? Let me, let me well, wait, let me finish. The, according to the Daily News, that's according the According to the Daily News, right. Well, I have to, what, I have, what the heck the else are we going to go? Isn't that the same company who had you winning before and you won? Yeah, no, it doesn't say it. That's so, not the I, same And I'll tell you so, something else, Mary. You know, when people say things that nobody checks it out, see, people will come into a, that's why we some ask. people will come into a meeting, in a, in a, in a legislative meeting, they'll say, well, Mr. Bach, well, Mr. So-and-so does so-and-so and so-and-so. And then we'll say, well, sir, would you give me the, the proof of that? And then they'll, then, then they'll get quiet. The fact is, Mary, that the Daily News did not endorse me. Fact is, the inquiry did not endorse me either time. Did I, you I, go I, to their editorial board? No, I only. I did not go to do the inquiry. I, Mr. Mr. Bolt called me. I told him. I said, I know that I cannot get the endorsement. You people thought <laughs> that he's a decent person who, who would honestly assess my, my, uh, uh, my qualities uh, or my qualifications. Uh, but I, I, I was under no illusion that I was going to get the endorsement, and I told them that. And we had a good frank discussion, but I wasn't going to, to go to the inquiry because the day after the last election, the inquiry said it's not over yet. And when I beat my, uh, my opponent, they said it's not over yet. They said we hope that his opponent runs again. And then they, then they, and, 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 you know, and after any election, maybe the day after, you get congratulated. They say we didn't support you, but we, we hope that you do a good job. The day after, they said that, that, that hope that he ran again. And not one time during the course of my, my tenure down there, had they written anything nice about me? And so you've had a distortion of the facts. Well, does, wh why is that, Mr. Blackwell? Well, Lucian Blackwell, Mary, 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 I have a record in this in this town of standing up for what's right, and I will never ever apologize for who I am. God made me; I give Him the glory. I'm not going to, going to be afraid of anybody, Mary. How do you how do you answer if you have to people who claim that Lou Blackwell has the vote of the so-called little man? Praise the Lord. And <laughs> that's, how I, and, that's how I answer that. And 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 and, and the so-called um, Germantown, Chestnut Hill, uh, Delaware County uh, people that have come into your district uh, will not vote for Lou Blackwell. Well, first, do you answer them on t on Wednesday morning by saying I'm the winner? I say that's wishful thinking. I say, Mary, that that. People, uh, the people who, you see, I'm glad you brought that up. I wish we'd give them a little time to explain Take this. Take your time. When I ran uh, the, for the, 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 uh, in, in the special, I had 82% African American. The people who are now not supporting me in the state senate got together and redrew my lines. And they used as excuse, and they took away 20% of my African Americans and gave me new people, thinking that, that that somehow would defeat me because they could get the votes of the people in the areas that you just described, and Lucian Blackwell. Would not, would not be okay. be able to do that, uh, 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 but I'm going to. Um, I, I assure you, Mary, they're in for 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 a rude awakening. What I have tried to do is to is to represent my people across the board, regardless of race, creed, color, national origin, whether they're rich or poor. I've tried to do that, uh, whether they're whether they whether they're whatever, Gentile or Jewish. Uh, uh, so there's no uh, truth to the fact that that people who uh, who who have uh, uh, a substance will not support Lucian Blackwell. Fact is, Mary, that when people are poor, they have a special problem. They have a special problem. When people walk in the streets with no place to go, they have a special problem. For anyone to suggest that doing that is wrong, to helping people who cannot help themselves is wrong, it's something, there's something wrong with them. I don't care if it's a newspaper or, or an individual. And Mary, I praise and thank God every day that I have the good sense to try to help people who cannot help themselves. And I will continue to do it. Sarah from Overbrook, good morning. Good morning. You have a question? Um, Congressman, are you for or against prayer in the school? I'm, I, I am for prayer in the school, and my, my opponent also has been distorting the facts. I supported the Sam Johnson Amendment for prayer in, prayer in schools. 
I have a letter where, where, he, where he thanked me for supporting, he happened to be a Republican from Texas, where, where he, he, he thanked me for supporting uh, his amendment. I, but I did vote against an amendment that would, that would take away funds if you didn't, did not permit it. And that's where my, uh, my opponent uh, got misinformation. But if you look at the record, and I'll tell you what, bet him a little money and say, Lucian Blackwell says on record that, that he voted for prayer. Bet him a little money, and I don't mean the money for yourself, but say I'll give, tell him Lucian Blackwell will give, will give $10,000 to, to, to the NACP. <laughs> okay, I'll give $10,000 to Mary Mason uh, 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 what, what you call foundation. It? foundation if I vote against school prayer and I want if, if, if and, and if I if I if, if I voted for school prayer I want him to give ten thousand dollars I bet you I bet you he would not take it well now wait a minute that's I, a bet yeah well, I want to hear this that's a bet let me say it again oh, oh, let me yeah, say it again yeah. okay. I'm saying that I voted for school prayer in the schools that's my final vote I voted for school prayers in the school I did not vote there was another amendment that said if you did not allow school prayers you wouldn't get any uh, education funds. I voted against that, that amendment. In the final analysis, I voted for school prayer in the schools. My opponent's been going around saying that I did not do that. I'm saying that I will give your foundation $10,000 if we'll, we'll look at the record and the, and the Congress, that's public record. Yeah. If I voted against prayer in schools, I will give your foundation $10,000. If I voted for prayer in schools, then I want him to give your foundation $10,000. Well, I'm going to sure check that Praise out. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <I'm gonna> <laughs> Hallelujah. That'll settle that. Hallelujah. That'll settle that. You see, they've been distorting the truth, Mary, all the all, all way along because... But it's been such a, it's a... The, the campaign has been on such a high road. I, I, and I guess maybe because you know the difference, I don't What's, know that the truth has been distorted. The problem is that I haven't tried to answer foolishness, gossip. I haven't tried to do that. I haven't tried to answer people who distort the truth. But when they do that, they let me know they're afraid. They let me know that they're not qualified. They let me know that they'll do anything to win. And Mary, I can't stop that. But every time you tell a lie, I'm not going to run and say, hey, he's lying on me. I'm too polished and too sophisticated and too experienced to do that. But I'll just have to take care of it on election day. <laughs> well, we thank, thank you, you and wish you well and hope that if it's necessary, you'll drop back in one more time before Tuesday. Mary, I'm going to try. Uh, you know, uh, being, uh, you said being a war leader, I have extra duties uh, I will try to drop in uh, well if, if necessary I, I don't want anything to come over the microphone that is not true that okay. you can be available if I to feel defend that it, if I feel necessary, that necessary you call us but what I've tried to do Mary is not to not to to be defensive about lies you know about Star Wars I mean it's plain about my record on Star Wars I'm a dove I'm ready to dove I'm, I'm ready to ultra liberal is that a D-O-V-E <laughs> That means you're good, one of the good guys. I'm behind. Thank you so <laughs> thank much. Thank you so much. We thank you for being here. Thanks, man. Thanks. As a child, his parents told him, if you work no. hard and play by the rules, you'll succeed in life. Dwight oh. Evans listened to his parents, oh. and he has worked very hard. I gotta get these Founding the Ogons